Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth podcast. This week brought to you by... Loading it. <laughs> <laughs> this week brought to you by Squarespace, Magic the Gathering, Arena, and Audible. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. Friends Couch. I'm Andrew. And I'm Gus. You're not Friends Couch. No, but we're on the Friends Couch. Yay! Which I had to point Don't, out. No singing. It wasn't an applause. I was clapping the tune. I know. I mean, they, they didn't know. <laughs> Don't tell them because then they're going to have to cut it. <laughs> Do you have to cut claps? <laughs> no, you two were. You just, oh, we just got a cease okay. and desist Slightly immediately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lawyer. A, a, a lawyer pops out from inside the couch. <laughs> like, <laughs> I represent friends. You must immediately stop. So Eric just said claps are fine. Does that mean we could clap the whole theme song? No. no. <laughs> that is the worst podcast we've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst. So, um, <laughs> Chris, I saw Chris walking around right before we started the podcast. I asked him to, I, I ran into him in the kitchen. I asked him to step over here. Chris he was going through the trash. He, he might, he met, yes, that's a really good way to put <laughs> you're, it. You're saying that as a joke, but it's real. He, uh, so I, 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 I've been talking with Chris for the past couple of weeks. He got one of those Olive Garden unlimited pasta passes. Oh my God. I knew this would come And up. today was the first day where you, today was the first day you could use it, right? Today Chris? it started. Yes. Oh, did you go Chris's to Olive Garden today? No, I'm on my way after this. You haven't gone yet? Well, okay, here's the deal. It uh, it opens at 11, so I couldn't go for breakfast. And then... Um, <laughs> Would you have pasta for breakfast? Yeah. No, thick Psycho. Italian food for breakfast. Yeah, and then and then lunch. During lunch, I, I had a, a thing from 12 to 2. And then... And then I had... There was catered lunch here. I have a whole... So I'm... I'm I, it's the way it works. <laughs> so is, please. please. It was, it, it goes up on sale. There's like a wait list and stuff. And then it sold out in less than one second. So you bought this thing? Yes. It was $100. <laughs> no, no, this is unlimited pasta. Unlimited for, pasta for, six for weeks. nine, no, nine weeks. Nine weeks? Yes. But you wouldn't eat more than $100 worth of pasta in nine weeks, surely. From all the You garden. think I wouldn't? But, he, if it's, he, but if he's already prepaid 100 bucks, he'll eat way more than 100 bucks worth of pasta in nine weeks. Let's face it, he won't be alive you, for nine weeks uh, if he eats that much pasta. I, yeah, well, I, 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 we'll see. Um, <laughs> so I can, it starts today and I can eat as much as I want. Anytime I want. I mean, but, when they're working hours, 11 a.m. But it's to 10 really p.m. heavy food. It's like all you, all you also want salad, is like one bowl. Unlimited soup, salad, and you, pasta. You don't also, win friends with pasta. salad. Huh? It's not just pasta. But it's unlimited pasta pass. It's unlimited but it's pasta. also salad and, salad and soup. Yeah. Soup. Yeah. Unlimited? Unlimited. I guess because yeah. the restaurant has unlimited. Yeah. And breadsticks. Yeah. Yeah. Are you how, many, how often are you planning on going, Chris? Well, I'm going to go as well. So I, here's the deal. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sounds like a it manifesto. sounds like a deal. No. Keep going. Uh, found out uh, Zach Anner also got one. <laughs> <sighs> and so he texted me. He was like, oh, look what I got. And then that turned into a competition. Uh -huh. So now we have a competition to see who can eat the most Olive Garden during the span of the unlimited pasta. You guys are going to get huge. You're going to have a heart attack. Can we weigh you? Yeah. I, yeah, I was actually is, gonna weigh myself. Is that okay? We can do weigh. We you? have a weight thing. What do you call oh, those? Scale. Oh, weight scale. Thing? It's called a scale. That thing that definitely has a Chris, name. Aren't you a writer? <laughs> I, okay, look, there's a thesaurus <laughs> and a dictionary for a reason. Uh, a weight thing. Early uh, interior morning. It's okay. Gus gets out of bed and goes into the bathroom. He steps on the weight thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so the way the we kind of came up with some rules for it. Uh, I, I can't. Let me let me read them. Well, one, the base thing is whoever can eat the most meals at Olive Garden. Uh, but then there's like bonus categories. Like, well, one, you have to, it has to include salad, soup, and breadsticks. Naturally. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> All three uh, and, every time? Huh? All three every time. Yeah, or super, super. You can do salad because it's breadsticks, super salad. So you don't have to do soup and salad. You can okay. do one or the other. Uh, and then. A weight thing. Oh, oh there's a weight yeah. thing. The weight thing broke. Is it a phone? What the hell is that? <laughs> it's turning it, around. It, and then, so then, there's also, um, uh, there's bonus categories. For, it's the number of meals you eat, but you also have to eat everything you get. So you can't waste food. You can't go and then just throw it away. Can you get it delivered? 
No, you have to go to the store and eat it. You have to suffer the indignity of walking into an Olive Garden, (laughs) showing your unlimited pasta pass and your face. Oh, they'll know me by name. (laughs) Is it Uh, like TSA pre-check, like you walk up with your card and they're like, bro, right this Uh, way, Mr. Numeris? They have like a special section of the restaurant for you. Um, (laughs) And then there's bonus for whoever eats the most breadsticks. Uh, Oh, can we, we should start a bet. How many breadsticks do we think Chris can eat in nine weeks? Well, it also kind of depends because I'm also got to eat the rest of the pasta, so it's like that's like a, bonus category. a lot of carbs. No, um, and in then nine weeks, most that, that's nine, days? most weight gained is also a category, and then we also have most number of people you can get to go with you to Olive Garden. So you're but, gonna bring all of Rooster Teeth to Olive Garden? Well, I mean, I, so otherwise I'm gonna eat alone. Do we <laughs> do we don't count towards your numbers though? No, 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 and and the pass doesn't cover you, so I have to convince you to go and pay. Uh. And then I'll come here, pay six dollars for pasta at Olive Garden or sure, however much. Yeah, you here's the other thing though, you get penalized <laughs> for every meal you eat that isn't Olive Garden, unless <laughs> unless it's free. So like oh today, we like had, today's free lunch. Today we had catered lunch, so I could eat that no problem. But if I had gone to say McDonald's. I would have been penalized negative one meal. Or what? if you had gone to a grocery store and made yourself a meal like a responsible adult. Yeah, I would have been penalized for that. What you about get penalized for making. You get penalized for making your own food at home. If I bought it, yes. What if what? you bought it before and it's already at home? I don't think that counts because, <laughs> the, I mean, no. I mean, I think that counts as, as that's a penalty. Okay, that's a penalty. Okay. Uh, now, penalty. Do, now, can you loophole this and start shoplifting and stealing <laughs> food? I guess so. <laughs> it's free. Yeah, it's free. free. I mean, and the thing is, is like, so if one of y'all want to, if y'all want to, be like, hey, let's go get lunch. I can go get lunch with you, but you're gonna have to buy my food. Only if we don't want you to get penalized, which we don't give a fuck about. So <laughs> the stakes could not be lower no, for us also, at all. <laughs> you'll still lose points by not eating at Olive Garden. Well, I just won't lose points. I'm just not gonna gain. Chris, there's no penalty if it's free. There's no penalty if it's free. But the fact that you didn't eat there that day. Well, then is yeah, yeah. Well, so I'll have to go at night, or you know. Can you whatever. go twice in the same day? Yeah, it's unlimited, dude. No, I mean for like the game. Does that help you? Yeah, yeah, advanced yeah, quicker. Yeah, yeah. I if, <laughs> really hope that you're dating someone new right now. That I'm what? Dating someone new. Because if you have to be like, hey, you want to go get dinner? I mean, at Olive Garden, she'll be there every night for nine weeks. You could date a different woman every night. <laughs> you're, you're, and you're paying. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, I couldn't, yeah, no matter what, I can't buy, well, I guess I could buy someone else food. I guess that works. She's gonna be with him through thick and thick. (laughs) It's just gonna be... (laughs) Oh my god. What about the health (sighs) ramifications of this challenge? That's why there's salad, Gab. (laughs) He said that like... Salad doesn't dig you out of the cob hole. In chat, Samuel Aubrey says, isn't nine weeks from now Thanksgiving? Yeah, it ends on the 24th. Amazing. I don't know what... Thanksgiving is around then, right? It ends on the 24th of November? You're gonna turn... Oh my god. Thanksgiving's the 28th. Yeah. It's right before Thanksgiving. You're gonna turn into one of those kids that has like they refuse to eat anything other than Olive Garden after that. I don't know. I think after that I'll probably have had my full. Your full? Had your my full? Fill. Oh, it'll be his full as well. A writer. I'm getting I'm getting chest pains thinking about this. Yeah. This is like oh there's so much grease. I mean, I, I like Olive Garden. It's yeah. not bad food. I mean it's terrible food. But it's not it doesn't taste terrible. Would well, so you wanna go? <laughs> yeah, I'll go. I'll, I'll go. go. Yeah. So someone in chat asked you gonna stagger how us? far the closest one is. To the Rushdie's office? Yeah, it's uh It's about fifteen minutes. Nineteen minutes right now. With traffic. Well, yeah, yeah, about fifteen it's minutes. Yeah. yeah, it's about fifteen. It's I I live close to one. <laughs> which is the benef- to the benefit of me, cause Zach, he doesn't live near an olive garden. He also doesn't have a car. He's also in a wheelchair, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he also in a wheelchair. <laughs> so I have a huge what? advantage. That being said, <laughs> that being ways. said, he had an unlimited pasta pass a couple years back. Oh, so he knows so the he, game. He, he knows, he, he has uh, experience. He knows the ins and outs. Yes. <laughs> Mostly outs. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, I'm excited that, uh, we I'm excited for the start of your yeah, journey. Can we, are you, can we are you, weigh you? Yeah, we're going to weigh you. Yeah. Also, can we also, you bring stuff back? Because I want some. Stuff well, I don't know. You're not, you might not let him. To go oh. orders, but I think if I got a meal and I'm like, oh, I'm not done with this, they might let me take it. <clears throat> yeah. I want, I, which I, I need to do because I have to finish it. I want you to take photos of every single thing you eat. I want to see every single meal you have at Olive Garden and every and, person you go with. And I want a okay. montage. At the in 9 weeks I want to see a montage of 
all of the pasta you ate using your pasta pass. I'd Such like... a green day's time of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be scheduled in for one of the, the sessions. Absolutely. Me yeah. too. Absolutely. Y'all are all invited. Because, you know, when you're there, you're family. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, God. Is so, that the name of your challenge with Zach? Uh, you guys have to give it a title. We're just the, the unlimited pasta pass challenge. I don't know. We have team names. What, 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 how are you a team? It's one on one. No, no. Well, it's like, you know, hashtag team uh, Zaccaroni. Oh and then ha and then hashtag team Demarinera. That's pretty good. Actually. That's Those are pretty good. Pretty good. Is this a video? Is this Hotsy Life? I mean, it can be. It should be. We yeah, film it. You well, you're gonna it. be gone from work 40 minutes a day, traveling start, back and forth from Olive Garden. I'm gonna have to start taking meetings. Yeah. At lunch meetings. Get on the weight Olive thing. Garden. All right. It's gonna cost the company so much money for you lunch to do this meeting. every day. All right, Chris. Starting date: September 23rd. It's 5:11 uh, p.m. Do you have to be off it when you, you start? What are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> He's never used a weight thing before. <laughs> That's right, move it. The jib wasn't set specifically to where you were or anything. Bring it, bring it. <laughs> for, <laughs> for crying out loud. There we go. Okay. Chris has never worked oh, on a film set. Oh, yeah, pull out that wallet. Yeah, you, don't want to, really, you don't want that to weigh you down. Yeah, don't want that extra point zero zero three hundred one. One four seven. One four seven. One forty seven. Good place to start. It's about ten stone seven. Ten, ten, ten and a half stone. There you go. <laughs> or a hundred and forty seven pounds. Why are you stretching? He's like, he got off the scale and like, he's like stretching uh, off camera. I gotta go Olive Garden. He's gotta stretch his stomach out. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for uh, keeping us informed, Chris. Thanks for uh, humoring Keep me. Keep track of the calories for a total. Yeah, the film it. Yeah. Uh, the chicken Alfredo uh, has 4,500 calories. Oh no. So, yes. 40... Is it a family size? No, nope, it's Alfredo? an individual dish. What? The chicken Alfredo there has 4,500 calories. It's like Enjoy. Two it. days worth of food. Yep. We're gonna one test meal. my metabolism. <laughs> Your yep. metabolism? <laughs> Just go. <laughs> I was gonna let him slide away with it. Forty-five hundred calories. Yeah, that's too much. Can can we really try to get him on like every week? I just want. I need to like keep hearing about I this. Need, I, I need. I need updates. I just disgusting. want to watch that number go up. <laughs> every that, week. that should be an RT life. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, now we have to go to Olive Garden with Chris to film it. I'm excited about the time that I go with him. Do you want to nice. just have like you and him? Oh, yeah, I want one on one. Oh, okay. Fine. <laughs> I've never hung out with Chris on his own before. I don't think I have either. Well, guess I mean, there's a reason that we don't do that. <laughs> but now we have a reason to actually go with him. When you're here, your family, as he said. So why do they make? Uh, so I'm looking at the nutrition information on their website. Why do they make this so? Uh, I know why they make it so difficult to read. Uh, why am I asking it? Because <laughs> <laughs> no one would ever go. Yeah. Oh, a finger comes on the screen, just going shh. You don't want to know. Shh, just be quiet now. The la just lasagna frittata, 3,200 calories. God, that's like, how could anyone finish that? They do. A lot. Very often. <laughs> In Chris's case, several times a week for many weeks. Yeah. Let's check out that metabolism. <laughs> that metabolism. <laughs> Till he's buried in a piano crate. <laughs> that's, uh, that's crazy. Should we predict now how much weight he's going to gain after nine weeks? Uh, I mean, he goes to the gym. 40 though. pounds. 40? Forty pounds. I'll give it. If he if he eats the amount that's, of pasta he is yeah, like I, setting out to eat, I yeah. That's not that crazy. That's only like four and a half pounds a week. Yeah, and if you're eating forty five hundred calorie to like th even like three three thousand calorie dishes several times a week plus any other normal food, w absolutely he could put on forty pounds in nine. Especially weeks. because he's penalized for eating anything else that's not Olive Garden. Yeah, just a pound every like. Day and a half or something. What, what's the math on that? Something like that. Yeah. And considering how high uh, all that food is in sodium, he's going to be retaining a lot of water, so that will like boost. It will uh -huh. be water and the fat. Oh, and this, the this is not Price is Right rules, right? We don't <laughs> no. we, like if we go over, we can still. I think yeah, it's just okay. the closest to it. Oh you know, yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm going to. I'm. I think forty is plausible, but I'm going to say thirty. I'm going to say Safe twenty bet. because I think Chris is going to get scared around fifteen, <laughs> and he's going to just cut back. He's going to be like, oh, I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to say. He's gonna gain twenty five pounds. Mm. In chat, Dubsy Wubsy says he's gonna be as jacked as Blaine. What if he just like starts really hitting the gym and like converts it all to muscle? <laughs> How did he do it? How'd you do it, Olive Garden? <laughs> <laughs> or he has like super ripped arms and legs, but a fucking huge gut. <laughs> it's just all carbs and fat. That's a great idea. That should definitely be filmed. 
Yeah, it should be. Well, especially because he's gonna be missing so much work to have to go to but Olive Garden he, for two times. He can make it day. work. Right, like it's part of work. Like it'll be his job exactly. if he's making. It's like I'm making content. I'm filming that RT live for nine weeks. I mean, yeah. if he wanted to make it work, he could have just expensed the meals to Rooster Teeth if it was a video, and he wouldn't have to spend a hundred bucks on this pot. I, was, I tried to buy the pass too. Uh, did you? A really? lot of people but, in our office uh, were trying to. Yeah, you I, and Blaine too. Yeah, I, I, did, I did not get it. Uh, no, because okay. there, was, <laughs> there was an option where if you bought it, you had the chance to buy like a lifetime pass. How much was that? Uh, like a thousand? I, no. no, no. I think I want to say it was like. 500 bucks, but they only had like 500 of them or something small. God damn, dude. I don't, I, don't, I don't even like Olive Garden. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I just want to get the lifetime pass just so I can always have free food when I'm I want. Not gonna lie, all this talk about Olive Garden is making me hardcore crave Olive Garden. They didn't even fucking pay us. I know. <laughs> Man. It has the same effect when I watched Super Size Me. I had they, a huge probably, crave for McDonald's after that. Isn't, that. isn't that fucked up? Yeah. Just like same Mad Men, they're just talking about how bad smoking is, and I'm like, that looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. It looks pretty good. That looks yeah. delicious. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about Breaking Bad? Are you like, man, I'm going to try some of that <laughs> Give me some of that mess. Blue and please. Everything. They made it look very pretty. Not that it has anything to do with it. <laughs> Uh, my, my, my designer smoke uh, things is definitely uh, how pretty they look. A nice color. <laughs> were, were you a smoker at one point? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably why because yeah. I, I watch people smoke and I'm like I have no desire to do that whatsoever Yeah, no, it's it's completely like the the like the memory coming back mm. and being like mm, the way it makes Yeah, a coffee newspaper what? crossword. What made you start smoking? <laughs> like what was the that moment? Was it like peer pressure? I'm always curious to find out how people start you will not believe how I had my very first cigarette and what got me s smoking Were you were fresh out the womb. I was in an anti-smoking PSA in San Antonio <laughs> And they gave us real cigarettes. Wow. I was playing a 50s greaser type, and it was like this flashback sequence, and I was like 15 <laughs> or 16, and they were like, okay, well, here, just like pretend to smoke these in the, in this scene. And I was like, oh, these are like real cigarettes. And so I was like, okay. Uh, <sighs> oh. I just like <laughs> immediately got that like nicotine lightheaded feeling, you know, it, I wasn't on drugs, but it was kind of like, Oh my god, what? And that was it. I got, that was the first cigarette I had was on an anti-smoking PSA. That anti-smoking PSA was actually funded by the Marlboro Corporation. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. We, like, we gotta get, we gotta get to teens somehow. We can't use Joe Camel anymore. <laughs> Let's you, make anti-smoking PSAs and give them real cigarettes. And cost everyone in the yeah. country. Part of me feels like you should find that company and sue them. Uh, they, they're, I guarantee you they're out of business. Yeah. How long point. did you smoke for after that? Um, a a handful of years, kind of oh like. Oh my god! So the money that you must have made making that, you must have spent, spent like by like twenty five <laughs> times in cigarettes. I mean, uh, undoubtedly, it's not oh even close. God. It's like the oh the ratio god. is uh, upsettingly not in my favor. Um, it but, reminds me of uh, <clears throat> when we filmed that CBD Sammy short, mm -hmm. and we had kids. We cast kids in it, and obviously everything we were using was fake. Like we had little Corona bottles that was filled with apple juice. We had. These like gum sticks that looked like cigarettes, mm -hmm. and then obviously the CBD was just like water, I think. Yeah. Um, and Chris was directing it, and like during one of the scenes when the kids had like both the fake beer and the fake cigarettes, Chris was like, "Yeah, dance, all right. Now chug some of that beer, all right. Now take a hit off your cig." <laughs> and I'm just like, St "Chris, <laughs> stop! No, we are going Candy to jail." Stick. Yeah. Oh. So uh, now those kids all smoke. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad news. Don't do it. I'm here to tell you right now. I never do it. I tried to smoke once when I first moved to Austin. Uh, I felt like everybody in Austin smoked, and it was like just to try to fit in. I was like, "All right, I'm gonna try it." So I went down to like a convenience store and I bought a pack of cigarettes, and like I lit it and I took one puff and I was like, "Nope, I'm not doing this." And then I walked by where all the smokers were outside. I was like, "I found someone who had the same pack of cigarettes." So like, here you go. You can you you can have these. I love the idea of you trying to fit in in Austin for like five minutes and then like, I'm not going to try and fit in anymore. <laughs> like, no, no this, this is definitely not for me. This episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating a website and online store is so much easier now thanks to Squarespace. Squarespace is a platform with everything you need to take control of your online presence and run your own business. We've been telling you about Squarespace for a long time because they are really awesome. Uh, we go way back. Uh, they've been they're really easy to set up system for anyone to use and customize. 
you know, they've been advertising with us for a long time. We can't emphasize enough how easy and awesome it is using Squarespace. Every Squarespace template design supports all major content types, including pages, galleries, blogs, commerce, calendars, and more. With Squarespace, get your message and work out into the world. You can build your own subscriber base and email lists. The tools to do it are all included and no plugins are needed. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash roosterteeth for 10% off your first purchase. All right. Last time we asked you guys to share with us your Squarespace created websites. We've gone through, picked some of our favorites. And as a reminder, with Squarespace, you too can make sites like this. So be sure to tweet at us with hashtag RT Squarespace. And here's a few of our favorites. First up, we have at Flitcher. Next up, we have at G Crees or G Cries. Sorry, Gregory. I hope one of those is right. And finally, last up, we have at DDT Cloud. Sounds dangerous. Uh, all right, so thanks for showing us your websites, guys. Uh, thanks for using Squarespace. <clears throat> but yeah, it's 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 funny how radically that's changed. I feel like now, for the most part, you really in public, like if you're walking out in public, you don't see anybody smoke. Rarely. Yeah, uh, at all here anymore. Um, Which is nice. Yeah, I mean, you get people like who, who are vaping, but even that's like not nearly as prevalent as it used to be like also it used a lot to be, of vape smells real good yeah but, but like before <laughs> like they, before there was a yeah a smoking ban it's like anytime you went out downtown it's like everyone was smoking in bars so it's like it was just part of the things like oh you're gonna stink like smoke when you yeah. go home after i mean a lot of the reason my friends in england stopped smoking was because they had to suddenly go outside to smoke and it's freezing mm. and it's like, i don't want to be cold <laughs> i'm just gonna not smoke and they just they quit a lot of them yeah i remember we're back you know i came i moved to austin in 2003 and you know you could smoke in bars and everything like that and when they like passed the smoking ban there was like all oh, this uproar and businesses were like oh this is gonna like kill our business and people come to bars to drink and smoke and everything and there was an uproar for about three months and then nobody gave a shit anymore yeah and it was like just stop smoking oh, in bars and it was like, yeah it's like oh this is like way more pleasant i can <laughs> yeah, this is totally fine and you know we have it's it's not cold here outside uh you nope. know 10 months out of the year so patios are it's mostly patio weather all the time mm -hmm. so yeah it's like a big brouhaha for nothing england also put on like pictures of lungs hanging off and like cancer and stuff all over the packets which i think put people off as well yeah you ever see those i have yeah they're yeah. they're very gruesome a lot of them like very graphic yeah i don't yeah, know which i think you know kind of need to do for some people i don't know if it's the same way in the uk but i know in australia when we've been there it's like they don't have them out like they keep them behind the counter in a closed cabinet yeah. Yeah. and you have to tell them specifically what kind you want and they grab it for you and it's covered in like graphic images of some cancerous organ it's like here you go <laughs> yeah you're and you're paying like 25 dollars for it here's a picture of a man who used to have a throat enjoy <laughs> I and never... if you press it if you press it it sounds like the talking throat radio it's like <laughs> all right here's now do this <laughs> you want a sick butt <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Um, I I was saying that when I was younger uh, in elementary school, our teacher made each person in the class do a project on a different type of um, like cancer or or symptom of smoking. And the one that I got was lip cancer. So like some you people did lip? like lip. So that's apparently like something that could be caused by smoking over time. It's not as common as things like lung cancer or of things of that nature, but. Um, I, as part of the project, had to look up photos and like make like a whole like poster board Good about God. it and everything like that. And the photos that I found for lip cancer were like so insanely damaging that any time cigarettes were anywhere close to me as a kid, even like with peer pressure, I had like zero desire for it. So it worked. It worked. Just for, yeah, just force your kids to do projects <coughs> on different types of cancers you get with smoking. Well, because that's like visible. It's yeah. on your face. It's like right there. You see like the effects like right on the face that it has. It's like, that's a lung. I don't know what that looks right. like. It's like how, 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 how would that affect me? That's inside <laughs> me. No one could see yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you, yeah, you see that. You see that right on the face. Man. Chilling stuff. It's very chilling. Speaking of right on the face, I've been, I've been, I've been in hell the past week or so. Oh. <laughs> so I've got. You have some makeup on it. I've too. got some makeup on it right now. But I've got a mole at the top of the bridge of my nose. It's like a little bump, and uh, people sometimes see it and they'll ask me like, "Oh, did you break your nose or something?" It's like, "No, it's it's just a mole." 
Uh, but it, but I, st I had to start using a CPAP a few months ago. And whenever I put the mask on, sometimes I put it on a little too tight and it irritates the mole <laughs> and it gets super red. So it looks like, like Barbara asked me today, it's like if I had burned my nose, like, no, it's my fucking CPAP on my face. <laughs> and it's just, it's just fucking awful. And I'm super self-conscious about it. Does it hurt? Oh, now I feel bad for pointing no, it out. No, it's fine. I, I know it's there. It, it doesn't really hurt. But uh, I went to see my, uh, uh, my dermatologist about it. I was like, hey, you know, I've got this thing. I put my CPAP mask on and it really irritates it. It's like, is there anything you can do about it? He's like, well, you know, we really can't remove it. He said, uh, what we could do is like try to grind it down. But then that'll leave like a long scar uh, where it is. I'm like, yeah, that's not that great. And he was like, can you like put the mask on a different way or wear it somewhere else? It's like, well, I mean, no. Yeah, wear on my back. <laughs> it's a mask. It kinda, it's designed to go right there. Sit on it. Nah, what do you think? Yeah. I think your best option is just to put a Band-Aid right across your I nose. I do something. Or like one of those breathing strips, but just wear it higher. <laughs> yeah, like on the very top. So they can't yeah. remove it and put some different skin on it? That sounds... Like a graft? Like not, from like my arm from or something? Or like round the back of your head or something, I don't know. It sounds, that sounds like a lot of... Yeah, because that won't be like, obvious. Big procedure. It just has a different color skin on his nose. It's got back hair growing out of it. <laughs> <laughs> just right there at the bridge of my nose. Just find the piece of dick skin they cut off during the <laughs> circumcision and get that on there. I can get circumcised now. Oh, right, you're use, not circumcised. And then use the yeah. foreskin right. up there. Or like partially circumcised. Partially? <laughs> I've got a convertible. <laughs> All right, time to put the top down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need the whole foreskin and put it in your eyes. It'd be massive, wouldn't it? <laughs> but he, he's, his dick's not gonna have half its foreskin on it. Just what like a little curve. Just cut like a small square up the foreskin. Looks like a half-open bottle of Maker's Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it likes to get some sun. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's the worst idea. <laughs> Yeah, you can pee through it sometimes. Oh, uh, great. No. Oh, man. It would, really, it would really look like a turtleneck sweater at that oh, point. <laughs> I love yeah, how you doctors, have all this bare skin. I was going to say, I love how doctors will suggest things like that completely casually as if any reasonable person would have. Like, <clears> it's like, oh, yeah, we can we can grind it down. I mean, you will have a seven inch scar from the like middle of your forehead down to below your nose. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we can set that up well, this know, afternoon you if you want to talk to the nurse outside. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you want to do that, sure. But it's it's the like casualness with which they meant just like, okay, well here are your options. We can uh, you know, graft uh, your foreskin onto your nose and that should <laughs> totally uh take care of take care of the problem. I mean, you will yeah. It it sounds like an insult that uh kids would use in like an elementary school yard, like calling each other dick nose. <laughs> yeah. You'd yeah. be known as the convertible. It'd be great. The convertible. Yeah. You wanna see my party trick? <laughs> <laughs> Can't you just put some padding on the mask? It has padding already. I think it's just like it's the pressure. Yeah, just right. having it up against there. So I'll try a band-aid or something. Yeah, I feel like that might help mm -hmm. a little bit, but who knows? Are you circumcised? Yes. <laughs> oh, that, yes. 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 And you guys are not. We are not. Hell no. Team foreskin over here. Was it here. a religious thing or just because you grew up in America? I I think it's I think it's just a Ameri I mean, it definitely wasn't a religious thing. I think yeah. it was just like an American thing. Like, I mean, it's like, would you like this option? Uh, oh yeah. When I was born, and they were like, uh. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> would you well, would you take the salmon or the circumcision? Uh, yeah, it's just like a little checkbox on the thing. Like you know, before before the baby comes out, they're like, yeah, you wanna you wanna do this, and yeah, you just check that. And they just do it there. Yeah, I mean, it definitely definitely wasn't like religious or anything. Gotcha. I think it was just like, uh, yeah, go ahead. I guess I just don't know what's go like. Are people still doing that now, or is that now not? I feel like here they are. Anymore? I think yeah, it's still a thing here. Yeah, because that because Americans are taught that it's like a for hygiene reasons. Right, because of the smegma. Yeah, when that's there's no, there's no real scientific basis behind that. Yeah, you know, you know what helps with that? Bathing. Yeah, just oh. have a shower. <laughs> have a shower and wash washing all of your body, and it doesn't happen. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that the argument, like, well, it's a cleanliness issue. It's like, well, then only if the rest of you is also equally yeah. unclean. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Circumcise the anus as well. Then well, that's also you don't, if you don't wash your, that. You don't wash your anus though. Yeah, I blasted with karate chops and you stuff. You karate chopped the water <laughs> in there. With I was chops. just thinking about this the other day because we talked about um, someone who I knew through a friend who um, had Grogan's, I guess that's oh what they're called, or Dingleberries. <laughs> uh, and then Gavin was talking about how that was gross and all that stuff, but it's just like, you don't technically wash your anus either. I do. I've got like 
wet wipes. I just don't put oh. my fingertips in my anus when I'm in the shower. You don't have to like stick them in the hole. You just <laughs> It's like uh, it's like playing a wine glass. You just kind of <laughs> 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 Once your anus is humming, you know you yeah. said. <laughs> You know that's clean, baby. <laughs> Once you hit that brown note, <laughs> oh god, you're good. You're set. No, I would much rather use like bits of my hands that I don't do other stuff with than like fiddle about. With, but like, you're gonna wash your fingertips afterwards. Just get some latex gloves. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Put them on. I get it clean. It just probably takes me a bit longer because I'm not. Delving. <laughs> Delving. You should get a separate, um, what are those, those called? Loofah? Separate loofah just for your anus. A butt loofah? Yeah. Probably make it, like, buy it brown. Buy it brown, yeah. 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 So if you do have any coloring on it, it doesn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. <Yep. laughs> well, that's, uh, how, how do you segue away from that? Yeah, I, mean, uh, I don't know. Do you think so, we cut the ad read right into the middle of that conversation? Eric, oh. ma make it happen. That's, that's an Eric question. Um, for the first time ever, I had a pumpkin spice drink at Starbucks today. You know, where 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 it's it's today's the first day of autumn, so I went and uh, is it? Yeah, how's that work? The, sure. it, what, the way it works is four times a year the seasons change, and this happens to be one of them. Uh, it's not it's not much cooler outside. It's not much cooler, but uh, I went in. I was just gonna get like a cof a plain <laughs> coffee like I normally do, but they have like that TV television menu where it's like it, the display changes all the time. Mm -hmm. It was like it was like pumpkin cream iced coffee. I was like. Oh, that looks good. And the person behind the counter was like, it's really good. I was like, okay, I'll try it. I'm convinced while wearing your orange shirt. While wearing my orange shirt. Very in season. Celebrating the autumn season. What do you think? You, it was really good. Yeah? yeah? Are you a basic bitch now? I, I guess I'm, I'm the most basic of bitches. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it was good. It, it's just nutmeg, right? I like think that's so. it. I think so. It's like sent like a dash of cinnamon, two dashes yeah. of nutmeg. It's instantly a fall I, drink. Yeah, I was drinking. I was like, this doesn't taste like pumpkin to me, but oh, whatever. It was good. Pumpkin spice. Which I don't know the difference, or what's Cause, in there. Cause it's like cinnamon, nutmeg. Well, because nothing like pumpkin flavored actually tastes like. Have you ever had an actual <laughs> like from scratch from the gourd pumpkin pie? Yuck! Garbage. Yeah. Vile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Throw it in the trash. <laughs> you want that can like just cheap ass like forty eight cent can of pumpkin pie filling? The only way to fly. Pumpkins should yeah. not be eaten in any form. They're not food. <laughs> Pumpkin spice is generally a blend of ground cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, cloves, <coughs> and sometimes allspice. <gasps> Ooh, today I learned. There you go. I love pumpkin stuff. I, I I think it's just because my favorite season is fall. So like anything that reminds me of fall makes me happy. Oh yeah. Halloween. Why, why is it your favorite season? Because I like everything that comes with it. Like Halloween is my favorite holiday, but then also the weather is my favorite weather. I'm just like cool. Not cold. You could layer, wear boots and jackets and scarves and hats if you want. I I can I same boat. Like I love it. I love fall and spring. I like transitional seasons when yeah. things are like changing, and so you get that like light jacket weather. It's all I want. All I want in this world is light jacket weather. Oh, you'll I get just... it in about two and a half months. <laughs> For three days. November yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. Usually early November is when it starts, right? Yeah. I someone I think it was Jack Patilla who told me that in Austin the transitions for when it goes from hot to not hot anymore is right after Halloween. And then from not hot to hot is after South by Southwest. He mm. used to be right on the Halloween thing, but I, I feel like last year it was really hot into November. Yes. Global warming. Climate change. Yeah. There Climate was change. A, what was it? There was that thing uh, that, oh yeah. This September so far in Austin has been hotter than July. Are you fucking, what? Yeah. Uh, August was the hottest month, right? You know, the local NBC affiliate uh, had a had a piece about it. It's been the hottest September on record. Uh, the average, uh, the hourly average temperature in September so far has been eighty eight degrees versus eighty six point five in July. My God. We are doomed, folks. <laughs> that is grim. We've seen more hundred degree days this September than ever before. There was seventeen this month. Uh, there were 14 in 2011. That was the year where it was like 100 days over 100 degrees. Yeah, I remember that. That was the year, I think, before I moved to Austin. Mm -hmm. We've only had 5,500 degree days this year. I've started wearing my Apple Watch again. It has all the, the temperature stuff, like that gauge where it's like yeah. the lowest to the hottest. And I just put my bins out because I always forget to put them out. So I was, it was probably like 11 p.m. I was like, oh, God damn it. And it was like 30 degrees Celsius. It's... Pitch black. 
Yeah. I can't believe how hot it is at night. It's it brutal. just retains the heat. I mm-hmm. like that part though. I like the warm <clears> nights <throat> because coming from Canada, once it is dark outside, it's like it dips below 65 no matter how warm it was. I like sleeping in when the it's day. cold. I do too. So just to, run the AC. It's annoying. Have you have to blast AC all night just so you can sleep. Yeah, because who like man, the windows open when it gets cool enough to do like windows open. Yeah, little little breeze blowing through. Oh, that's get that, good good. Oh, the best. <laughs> I it, that I mean the 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 climate change is is real because I remember because my birthday my birthday's on Friday. Um, oh yeah. And uh, I I remember growing up like needing a jacket on my birthday, and like it being cool, much cooler at the end of September. Mm-hmm. But you probably like, had less skin. This is also true. A lot less everything, frankly. <laughs> less uh, layers internally. M- m- many, many fewer internal layers, certainly. But yeah, I just like just and just tracking like you know now I it's like bathing shirt, bathing suit, bathing shirt. Bathing <laughs> uh, it's one of those long sleeve <laughs> rubber shirts. <laughs> one of those like turn of the century like bathing suits. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's got like the everything. stripes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Tank top. Yep, precisely. Um, yeah, and now it's a uh, oh yes oh. Chilling, but in not that way. Yeah, I I am so baffled by the fact that like you could wear anything you want for Halloween in Austin, and it's fine. Like every costume I would ever do when I was younger would have to incorporate a winter jacket. I, I finally saw. Speaking of Halloween costumes, I saw. That's it. I saw the final sexy Halloween costume that I didn't think was possible. Should we guess? You want to take a guess at the last frontier of sexy. Halloween costume. Could we give a, could we give like a context? Like, is it a, from a movie, from a TV show? <clears throat> TV show. Oh, sexy, I think I I think I saw it. I think I know what it is. Sexy Chernobyl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but that's a good one. That's a, that's a really Chernobyl. good one. Sexy friends couch. Do <laughs> you know what it is, Andrew? Uh, is it sexy Mister Rogers? It was sexy Mister Rogers. No. For sixty dollars, you can buy a sexy Mister Rogers <laughs> Halloween costume. No, except they call it nicest neighbor costume. Uh, wow, uh, was he the nicest person who was ever born? Do you think? He probably hundred percent. I was watching clips of him because I didn't really grow up with that. But what an amazing bloke! Oh yeah, he's just the best. I'm excited to see uh, <clears throat> Tom Hanks' rendition of him in uh, "Won't You Be My Neighbor." Is that the name of the movie? That was the one that came out. No, there was it? there was a documentary about Mr. Rogers. Wasn't that one called Won't You Be My Neighbor? Oh, there, maybe there this is. maybe this one's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's yeah, one of the two. I'll look it up. Oh my god, that's, <laughs> that's scarring for stretching. life. If any if I see anybody wearing that, I'm gonna be so angry. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a pumpkin spice latte right I'm in be their so face. So hungry. <laughs> Wait, that sounds like horny and hungry. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um Let's see, where is it? Uh, Tom Hanks acting. <clears throat> a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day. There it is. I yeah. wonder if, if I don't get a haircut until Halloween, could I pull off like a Steve Harrington from Stranger Things? Oh, absolutely. You already kind of have his hair going. With the uh, ice cream scoops. Outfit. Yeah. Might try for that. Nice. I don't know what we're going to do this year for Halloween, for costumes. Are me you and Trevor do like were, a, a matching thing? Me and Trevor were um, Wayne and Garth from Wayne's World last year, and that was like the easiest costume in the world. Mm. Um, so I'd like to find something like that that we could do, where ideally we don't have to wear a wig, but it's okay if we do. So I don't know. Are, hmm. are, are you uh, calling the audience for suggestions? Yes. So if you have any ideas, podcast listeners, please help I us out. A, I did a costume with Meg once where she was the lamp, the leg lamp from... Christmas story. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was the box that it came in. But I'd never seen it and I didn't understand the reference. So you were People just. People asked me what I was. And I was like, I think I'm the box that her thing came in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I am. Just Usually the it's the other way around. Fragile on it. Fragile. Hey! Fragile. That, was, all right. that was all right. That, that's pretty Boot. good. Um, have you seen it since then? Yep. And good box? That is not a movie I would watch again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like the kind of thing you get to like. You grew up grow up maybe, watching yeah. it, yeah. I I grew up watching it, and you know, re rewatched it. Uh, I guess a couple of years ago. Terrible. Christmas Story. Never seen it. Stinks. It's no good. <laughs> and but people love it. Like on what, like on TBS, they show it like twenty four hours nonstop on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Oh it's my very God. American too. Like I couldn't relate to any of the shit that they were talking about or aspiring to. It was all. It was a very strange film. Have we talked about it on the podcast before? The debate of whether or not 
The Nightmare Before Christmas is a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie because it, it literally keeps me up at night. I feel like we have talked about it's, it's been many years, maybe. It, yeah, or like at some point we must have. We or not in person. We didn't talk about it. It's definitely on the podcast. But I don't. Which person. one is it? Not on camera. <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. You think so? I think it is. I, God. Yeah. I would call it a Christmas movie. I as think well. it is because yeah. it's about him discovering Christmas. <clears throat> the, the, the lesson, the lesson is like very Christmassy, like you know what he learns and what everyone learns, yeah. like is, is in the spirit of you know a, a Christmas, like all like Christmas movies and tales, like a character is changed and a town is changed, and that's a very like Christmassy like you know thing, like yeah. people's people's hearts are softened. Um, very and, true. And people come around on things, so then that's a very Christmas type thing. So I'd say Christmas movie for sure. Okay, very good. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Uh, Are you well, case, it's settled. Case, case That's it. That was easy. No dissenting opinions. <laughs> no I'm, arguments. I'm first on the podcast. <laughs> so refreshing. We actually agreed on something. <sighs> you're much, you're much better than Bernie was. Uh, <laughs> 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 I read a story uh, the other day about this guy. You know how like before college football games, they'll have like the reporters out in front of a crowd of people, and people always like hold signs up, like stupid signs or whatever. Uh, there was a guy who held up a sign that said, "I need I need beer money. Venmo me," and put his Venmo ID on it. And uh, he got on television, like they showed him, and uh, he said within 30 minutes he got $400. Oh my and god. Well, someone did that with a Bitcoin wallet right. once, didn't they? Yeah, I, I heard that one too. <clears throat> but uh, he decided that what he would do is he would, you know, take out, I think he said like uh, he wanted a case of Natty Light. So he's like, he would take out like, minus the cost of a case of Natty Light, he would donate the rest of the money to uh, charity. And uh, like people got wind of it, and people donated a million dollars. Whoa! Uh, to him that he then ended up turning around and uh, and donating to uh, a charity. I want to say it was like a children's hospital. I gotta look it up here. Wow. Let's see. Beer, beer money. What was, happens was, with the tax return? Bush, he was bush light that he was buying. So it wasn't even that much. If like, you immediately give it all away, do you have to? What happens with tax? Yeah, I was gonna ask. Or does the donation have that? tax? I think you. It said like a tax write-off, but it was to the University of <laughs> Iowa. Stead Family Children's Hospital. But if you get money sent to you via Venmo, in that kind of quantity, well, think, do you have to pay taxes? I on think that? Venmo also got wind of it, so I'm sure that they helped okay. figure out that kind of stuff. Because apparently, like Venmo did a match, and Bush Beer also decided to do like a, a fun match as well. It's awesome. Very nice. And uh, yeah, and uh, Bush Beer is going to put his <clears throat> a picture of his face and his name on a, a run of cans that they're going to sell. <laughs> They said that they're gonna give him a year's supply of bush beer, wow. which, which runs you like thirty-five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I mean that's like <laughs> it's no laughing matter. <laughs> yeah, but it's, oh. that's like super cool that you know someone puts up a sign just like as a joke, and now like a children's hospital is gonna get a million bucks out of it. Uh, it's it's crazy when, that people would see that and send money. I would never see like some idiot holding a sign on like a, a college pregame show and be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna send that guy money. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Can you imagine the look on that like? The instant flop sweat you would get, like checking your, like someone vend me one million dollars. You'd think it was like, okay, I'm like something's wrong. This, yeah. is, this is a mistake. There couldn't be like this. Sh should I send it back? <laughs> yeah. Uh, decline. I, do I accept or decline? Just <laughs> well, like it's, the thing is, it's already. <laughs> this is something I don't like about Venmo. It accepts it already. Like someone just sends you money, and now <laughs> it's your right. responsibility. If it was a mistake, to send it oh, back. That's right. That's why right. you don't even have to accept it. Just go straight in there. That's Which right. is really annoying because once some. Person, I guess maybe they clicked the wrong person in their friends list or something, but they sent me like 25 bucks for something and I was like, hey, I think you have the wrong person. And they're like, oh, could you send it back? And I'm like, now I feel weird sending money to this person I don't know. Yeah. Like, Why did you even bother telling him? Well, because it's, I don't know. <laughs> like <laughs> I, they would see no, that. I have no idea what you're talking about. I had an annoying interaction with Blaine the other day. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> we were <laughs> we were over in the, the other office over there across the parking lot and... I asked him to go. He said he was going to go out and get lunch. I was like, oh, while you're out getting lunch, can you buy a case of White Claws? And I was like, here. And I reached in my wallet and I gave him a 20. I was like, here, here's 20 bucks. You know, get a, a case of White Claw. He's like, no, no, no. Just Venmo me. And I was like, but I'm, I'm l literally handing you the money right <laughs> yeah. here. And he goes, yeah, but then I got to get you change. I was like, well, don't worry about the change. Just keep the change. Just get a case of White Claw. He's like, nah, just Venmo me. I was like, what? What the fuck? Like, I'm literally handing you money, this real money. Some people prefer to deal all digitally with that stuff, like no physical cash or with anything With 20 like bucks for a favor? I'm just saying some people, I personally don't care, but 
I think like people like Blaine just don't want to have cash on. Yeah, there. but I'm an old man. I don't use Venmo. It's like, oh, f- all right, fine. So I have to like fucking fire up Venmo and figure that shit out. Yeah, <laughs> just so you could <laughs> pay for the like. But also, you both got an iPhone. Why don't you just do the Apple Pay cash thing? He said Ven. I don't know. He said Venmo, and then I got pissed. And then I stopped thinking. I was like, "Motherfucker!" Now I gotta, I gotta fucking use this stupid ass app, <laughs> this glorified PayPal, to send this shit to him. <laughs> Your money's literally no good here. Right? It's like, <laughs> cash, take it off, take it out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking. Stupid. Literally right in front of you. <clears throat> yeah, I did that did to he Michael. Get the white claws. He did get the white claws. Okay, good. <laughs> well, I think it was the day that Apple Pay Cash went on, and I was like, I wonder how much people are gonna use this. And Michael said something funny to me in a text, and I just sent him one dollar as the <laughs> reply. And he was like, "Did you, did you just send me a dollar?" I was like, "Good joke." Man. <laughs> you, you're paying joke writers. I'm gonna start doing that to people. Send like twenty five cents. No, if they get, make me laugh. Get expensive. I think you can only send a dollar. That's the minimum. oh really? Yeah. No, you can send you can send any amount. I think. Can you? Oh. One cent. Test test it. Send me twenty. I guess the plus was. <laughs> Let me see if I the plus send. was just going up in dollars. Maybe you can type it. I just like did plus and it went to one. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna text you. you send me Whoa. a buck. Someone called me by accident. I didn't, my phone didn't even ring. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna text you, Gavin. <coughs> Gavin free. And I'm gonna type twenty dollars and let's see what twenty. It. it was all a ploy. It's just so I could. No, nope. Andrew, Nothing. I'm gonna send you send money. Send, send, okay. Oh, but then I can click it. You guys can send me money. And then nothing happens. What were you trying to do? I, I type twenty dollars and then it's clickable. Oh, there. My what? my balance oh. is fifty Request. cents, but I can't Request. send fifty. I just asked you for fifty bucks or twenty bucks. You know what? I have to agree to wait, terms and conditions. <laughs> your wait, your balance, your Venmo balance is fifty cents. Yeah, <laughs> but you, no, no, my Apple Pay thing somehow was fifty cents, but I, you could only send dollars. So I'm very confused <laughs> well, with how well, I have. So what if you do a decimal? <laughs> Let me overdraft this Apple Pay, but I can't even. Do they? What, what do they take? What do Apple take off those? They take a fee. I assume so. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they have to, right? Because if I pay a buck, well, pay me the twenty bucks and tell me, and we'll see how much comes through. <laughs> it's not letting me do fifty cents. This is very entertaining podcast material. In in this time, we could have. Just passed around a, right. a real see, dollar. That's why I was annoyed. You could have just pulled it out of your wallet <laughs> and handed it to someone. <laughs> so stupid. Sickening. <sighs> Awful. Here's uh, a, a very inconvenient amount of money for you. Ooh, am I about to get an inconvenient amount of money? <laughs> What's an inconvenient amount of money? <laughs> no, mom, no amount of money is inconvenient. Like, yeah, that's true. Not enough to really buy anything with, but now <laughs> it's just in your Apple Pay balance. Mm. That's fine. You fine. Can't, how oh, much you- I got sent... Uh, two dollars and fifty cents. That's not inconvenient. Hey, Burn. I guess you could buy like a some gum or chocolate bar. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't use that money to. It just goes in your in your shit in your account. Then how do you how do I have a balance? Does someone send you money? Can't you click on like a history? What well, do you think you you hold up your balance to a to a store and no. they deduct? Of course not. But maybe it works like a Venmo balance where if people send you. And just like collect it in there. Yeah. Can you send me 20 bucks if you've re- requested 20 bucks? Why don't you try that? <laughs> <laughs> well, once you send it to me, we'll figure it out. <laughs> this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by Magic the Gathering. Their new card set, Throne of Eldraine, is out starting September 26th, and they asked us to write our own take on some of these fairy tales. So we're going to read one of those for you right now. That's what this is. Yay! Hi, Blaine. Hi, Blaine. Hello. I'm going to read to you. I'm going to be the part of narrator in the Three Small Boars, written by Andrew Rosas, based on the fairy tale. If you can open your scripts to page one. (laughs) Yes, sir. Once upon a time, in the shadow of a tall mountain lived three small boars. The first small boar, the eldest, was wise and firm and didn't abide the foolhardy franchises of his younger brothers (laughs) who would roll in the mud. Fancies! Fancies! (laughs) Can we start over? (laughs) Fancies of his younger brothers who would roll in the mud of the hot springs near their home after dark. Brothers, come inside. It's not safe after dark. The night is home to unholy creatures that will lick your bones clean. Ooh. So we're doing accents, cool. Yeah, I'm doing an accent. Like you I... worry too much. <laughs> the night is young and the mud keeps us warm from the chill of the mountain. The second small boar was brash and bold and didn't heed his brother's words. <laughs> yes, brother. <laughs> Can't we stay out a small longer? <laughs> the third small boar was meek, oh, and, meek fragile. and fragile. Oops. <laughs> 
<laughs> but love to wallow in the bubbling earth every night. Get inside this instant. The forest of the mountain cloaks our fiercest enemies. The two youngest boars trudged inside the stone home. The first boar kept his gaze on the forest beyond the water. Just to look upon the trees drew the warmth out of his first small boar's breath. The wet wood of the pines became a black curtain of sorrow, unpierced by the strong light of the moon overhead. Whatever evil lurked there called him. The primal desire for annihilation was soothed by looking at it. As if the death drive was locked away and the deepest part of the boar's heart was coaxed out of his hiding and given free reign of his most immediate thoughts. Brother, are you coming in? He, yes, of course. It's not safe out here. The three small boars sat and ate at their modest table. The wood in the fire crackled and the cold wind whistled through the tiny cracks in the thick stone of the house which produced a dissonant whine. That's me eating. Suddenly... Above the plaintive piping of the stones cut an angry and heart-stopping howl. The light from the fire crackled in the house as if a specter had quickly passed by the mantle. The boars were frozen in their seats. What kind of creature could make such a noise? <laughs> He's got a breathing problem. <laughs> it's, very, it's very serious. The forest knows... The darkness below the treetops births all the manner of horrors. It feeds the creatures lust for blood and sharpens their claws and teeth for the getting. The boars moved delicately to the tiny window of the house and looked out into the night. There, at the edge of the woods, glinting the tendrils of moonlight, the boar stared at the eyes of an immense wolf. Oh. Its body was obscured by the cloak of trees, but the boars could estimate its size by the height of its eyes from the ground. The beast must have been massive. And at the very contemplation of what abomination lay beyond the eyes, the boars were chilled to the bone. Brother, are we safe? <laughs> Surely the creature would swallow us whole. We're safe. The stones that make this house are from high on the mountain, and the door is made of the mightiest wood from deep in that dark forest. You'll never get in here, wolf. This is the safest place in the dale. <laughs> Be quiet, brother. Don't tempt the creatures of the woods. The younger boars looked to their brother with shame on their faces and then turned back to the forest. The wolf was gone. Bam! <laughs> A thunderous force struck the door which shook the house. Dust rained from the hinges and the stately entrance. Bam! Another brute strike reverberated through the floor, but the door didn't budge. A murderous growl rumbled from outside. A river of fetid, viscous saliva ran under the door and pooled around the second small boar's hoof. Don't fear, brothers. Our home is, salv is our salvation. Stand strong. The boars huddled together by the fire. The banging stopped and the growl was snuffed out, reclaimed by the tenebrous forest. Is it over? Brother, it's over. That wolf is no match for our stronghold. The boars began to chortle and snort. The chorus of laughter was joined by a fourth diabolical harmony which tampered the levity back down to the boars' throats. The wolf stood at the edge of the woods, cackling a blasphemous laugh. Its eyes had become green embers. Suddenly, from behind the wolf, an even deeper sound rushed forth. An earth-rending roar thrashed the trees and split the timber on the, into jagged fragments. The wolf summoned a deep magic from the very heart of the mountain, as if the boars... Oh, bleh, as if the bones of the gods were being broken, <laughs> releasing a marrow of wind and terror. The gusts pummeled the boars' house into oblivion. The once strong stones became as fragile as ash, and the mighty door burned where it stood without a flame. Brother, help! Yes, brother, help us! The first small boar couldn't answer. The walls of the house burned and took flight into a tornadic frenzy. The boars were ripped from each other's arms and violently tossed to the air. Their cries could not be heard above the din as one by one their plump bodies were impaled on the jagged timber surrounding the house. The boars twitched and spluttered blood and looked down at their skewered bodies with cold eyes. The wind died as quickly as it began. The first small boar looked over at his mewling brothers and cried as the wolf began stripping the flesh from their bones. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Did not see that ending coming. So the third small boar lives, right? No, I live. <laughs> Throne of Eldraine is the brand new Magic the Gathering card set that matches together Camelot and Grimm's Fairy Tales, and you can play with new cards like these starting September 26th on Magic Arena. You can download for free on PC today at mtgarena.com. Um, 
I fucking hate the future. I hate, so, I hate, so I hate annoying, this. Isn't it? This is just oh, terrible. It's the worst uh, thing ever. I, I I ordered one of those stupid professional phones. I don't I don't have it yet though. I'm gonna get it next week. I, is this it? That's a professional telephone. After Whoa. all these years of using a phone, you're finally a professional. <coughs> you finally graduated. Oh, hey, look at a professional phone. What? Can I try your camera? Yeah, the camera's cool, actually. Yeah? Selfies yeah. look the same. You can do, <laughs> throw you, to the trash. You can Selfies do slow-mo ones, right? Whoa. Slow fees. slow fees. I saw your tweet about it. When did you invent that? Oh, I'm tearing my hands in it. Oh. I feel like Apple make... <laughs> they make, uh, I guess, like, well-designed stuff. They are such an uncool company. How so? Like the way they announce products and they got all these like rich farts up on stage, like practicing and doing all these demos. And it's like, hey, try try slow fees. It's like, why Apple? No one wants to do that. <laughs> They're just not cool. Mm. It, and I'm not cool, and I shouldn't have that opinion <laughs> on what, what's cool. Apple has over the years become like they. I remember like when the first iPod came out. It was like, oh, this is like really awesome and it seemed like a pretty hip, cool company. And over time, I get what you mean. They've become like the mom clapping on the one and three beats at a basketball game <laughs> company. It's just <laughs> Yeah. Like it's 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 it, it is the like presentations where they get up there like, yeah. are you guys excited? It, it yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's become yeah, a very to get square to, company. Like, be on an exercise bike while making an appointment and like order, organizing brunch, and it's like no one uses the phone or, like that. No, when yeah. they, people tweet memes at each other and like go on when, WhatsApp. When and they shit. when they announced like the app a few years ago, when they announced like the Apple Watch had cellular capability in it, they did it with that woman who was out like on a paddleboard in the middle of the water. She's like, "Yep, I'm taking a phone call on my watch out here." It's like. Who does that? Ooh, you're a fucking douchebag. Who's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna go paddleboarding and answer my phone calls on my watch like Dick Tracy. <laughs> it's like, it was uncool and it was made fun of for so long, but now it's just like an accepted thing, I guess. Like, it's not accepted, we're making fun of it. Be taken out of the moment at any moment, Apple. Like, <laughs> like why do they do those They should hire do, you. Do people, how many people watch that damn presentation? The, uh, there were a Millions. lot of people watching that YouTube live stream. I want to say it was over a million. I think there was like Shit, almost it's like That's coming up on two million, like one point eight or something. That's yeah. so many. So yeah, there are a lot of people who watch that. But how, but then how many phones do they sell? Hundreds of millions. I don't know. Yeah. What? So Tons. why even bother? Yeah. Is it good marketing to have that? Why don't they just be like, hey, here's the phone. It's in stores now. It's so people, people still buy them. It's so people start talking about the features on social people, media. People want to know. Like so we're talking about it here on the podcast. Yeah, but everyone has to sit through this two-hour presentation where you got to like pick out all the actual relevant information. Just yeah, read that is a annoying. post about. Why not have like different presentations? Like there'll be parts where like I don't care about any of this. I don't want to hear about any of this. These products. They said that they're going to build the new Mac Pro here in Austin. They built the old one in Austin. Right. That was a piece of shit. That was though. a piece of shit. They were too worried about the new one. <laughs> so the last one sucked. The garbage can one. It yeah. was the worst Mac I've ever had, and really? not not because. It just didn't work right. Like it would just hang and it would get too hot. I guess the like, the, the, the the way it was designed meant that thermal throttling was huge on it, mm -hmm. and it just sucked. I just hated it. I'd rather use a laptop than that thing. Yes. I had one, and I, a miss. and I would add, I would edit slow mo stuff on my MacBook Air over the actual professional computer for editing. Yeah. MacBook what, Air is pretty capable. What if you had like an iPhone Air? And you were like, my my iPhone Pro is a piece of shit. I'll do it. I gotta use my iPhone Air to make phone calls. <laughs> they made an iPad Air. It's true. Dude, I would love a little keyboard that would come down off the phone that you could just like <clears throat> set this up and type like a little computer. That'd be so fun. <laughs> Isn't that the whole point was getting away from all of that shit? Nah, man. Take me back. <laughs> Technology cyclical, man. Yeah. <laughs> that would be like the new feature, actual buttons. <laughs> The new Apple product, car phone. <laughs> it's just a Blackberry with an Apple logo on it. Like, that's, wait, hold on a damn minute. Come on. Blackberry, Jesus. The headphone jack is coming back. <laughs> At the top would... of the phone. <laughs> Man, Did uh, it ever used to be in the top? It was on top for a while, yeah. right? Yeah. It was like when they first made it, I think. Oh, like the iPod. Yeah. But, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, didn't right like Samsung, didn't they pull all of their videos offline? Like they had all those videos making fun of Apple removing the. Headphone port, and yeah. then when they removed the headphone port, like they just took all their videos down. <laughs> their like, old videos when they made fun of the app. Redacted, <laughs> completely yeah. redacted. We never did that. <laughs> They're finally gonna release that folding phone this week, I think. Yeah, later this week. It's delayed by like five months. Really? Because all like the demo models were like creased and like breaking in half, right? right. Like, they realized it didn't work. <laughs> 
They also had this like protective film on them that people were pulling off. Right. And they were like, no, no, that's the part of the fuck. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully they say that they figured out all the problems. And but it's like, do you want a phone that goes in half? No. Again? No. You had that one that like. I remember you the using sidekick? it. Yeah, the Hell sidekick. Yeah. 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 Sidekick. Awesome. Hell that, yeah, that was, sidekick. That's a fucking great phone. There's a video of you from like 2004 or 2005 um, <clears throat> using that phone. It's like at an RBBTO or something like that. Yeah. That yeah, you, br you brought awesome. that phone, I think, when we met in like 2004. Yeah. Because that phone could do TSM. <clears throat> and remember that yeah. was like back before world phones were a thing? Yeah. And uh, I'd n they didn't have them in the UK. So you, you did that screen flip thing and I was like, what is that? <laughs> it's super cool. I think our first conversation ever was like you telling me about your phone. It was like super satisfying. You had one too, I assume, based on the reaction. I did, oh no, I did not have a sidekick, but my buddy had a sidekick and would not put the thing away because oh, yeah. it was God. just the coolest shit. What on did there. you have? Uh, I had uh, the un I had the unbreakable Nokia. I think that was my first phone. Was the unbreakable Nokia? Um, kicked it, dropped it, dropped it in water. Could not kill that thing. I had a razor. Hell yeah. <clears throat> a Motorola Razor, which was honestly probably one of the best phones I ever had. That thing. I like, think they're going to, they said they're going to relaunch that later yeah, this year. Yeah, they're bringing back, they're bringing back the flip. They're I'm, bringing back flip phones. I miss yeah. the sound it would make when it would turn on. That was always my favorite thing. The little song. A little boot up noise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nokia flip. I had a, the, a piece of shit Ericsson for the, for a long time. That was like only good for Snake um, <laughs> and, and uh, calculations. And then I, I got, uh, I didn't get an iPhone though till way late. Like yeah, it was it was several yeah. generations along before I got. I iPhone. had a BlackBerry Pearl up until I got the iPhone. I think that was like in 2012. I got an iPhone. 2013. Maybe. Yeah, it was somewhere around there. Um, Michael Jones had an LG Chocolate. <laughs> Didn't he like, have that when you first moved here? Yeah, for like a couple, maybe like a year <clears throat> after he moved to Austin. I want to say. I and he didn't. About he that. didn't use like predictive text either. He would you know hit two twice to get a B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he, would, he would, yeah, he would do this. He would go because he'd blind as shit. He'd be like this, like texting like that. <laughs> and uh, whenever he would yell at me over text, he would write these like massive all caps paragraphs. And I'd be like, "Man, he he pressed every button to get these letters like several <laughs> times. He like he really must be angry." Also, don't, do you not have to put on the caps lock every time or the shift every no, time? No, I think you can set it. Okay. You can lock it in. But that would be it was funny. Even more funny. That's how you know he really meant it. Like that's yeah. that's commitment to that. Like I have to like double click to get the B and then hold it down so it capitalizes it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of passion <laughs> in those old text messages. <laughs> oh god, man, how shitty. I do not miss that. No, not at all. I remember the first time <clears throat> I went to Australia was like oh four. Yeah, and I was amazed because everyone down there was was like texting, and it was like barely in the infancy in the United States. It was like it was just starting to take off. And they were like, people kept asking me like, you, oh, y'all don't text? I was like, no, I don't think I know anybody who texts. Whoa. And here we are just like a few years later. It's like, I can't imagine ever calling anybody. They never, uh, I also never used the thing that I think the uh, new iPhone has, which is that like swipe text. Oh, I don't like that. How do, uh, do you use it? No. Nah. It's like you basically, you don't lift your <clears throat> finger out off the keyboard when you're typing. You do just they basically connect the dots to make words. Yeah. I've, se I've seen people do that and it. It makes no sense. Like it. I don't like, understand how it works. No, it's like watching people use like the computers in Star Trek. Man, in like seven. Just... I can't wait to see the flashback in seven years from now when people cut this. Yeah. Conversation. Yeah. I, I like occasionally having conversations like this because you just sound like such an ancient idiot. And yeah. Even like five years from now, yeah. they actually took out a feature that I didn't realize how often I used it from this new phone. Did you ever, when you're typing on the keyboard, you want to move the cursor so you just like 3D touch the keyboard mm -mm. and then you can drag the cursor around? Oh, you could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's gone now. You have to press down on the space because they removed the 3D, 3D touch. touch now yeah. it's just haptic Force touch. touch. Force touch is left, but not 3D touch. Yeah. So now, you, <laughs> so now you have to hold down the space bar and then you can move the cursor around. But I must have used that every time I do a text because I used to get annoyed when we need to go back and change something <laughs> and the you can't put the cursor where you want because it flips all around. So you also just your finger covers the entirety of the sentence so you can't actually see where you are. Yeah. Anymore. And now I, have, I didn't know. I, now, I didn't realize you could have done that. Yeah, I used to do it all the time. But now, when you hold down Thanks the keyboard, sharing. it it like does the secondary function of that key like it used to. Hmm. But try it. Now it's I want to try it on it's you guys. Feature. You can do it on the space bar though. Well, that, that's how you. What do you mean? I thought you said now you have to do it on the space yeah, bar. Yeah, but okay. I was used to just doing it on any key. Well, that's better than what I had. I was I was like a caveman fucking <laughs> getting mad at the sentence that my finger was blocking. Yeah, it's nice. Trying to 
trying to put punch it. Yeah, Whoa, kept... this is cool. I've never done that before. I, I apparently use it almost every time <laughs> I use my phone. So I'm trying like... to buy something for two dollars and fifty cents on Amazon. <laughs> right? See Keep us updated. Well, they, they probably wouldn't even take Apple Cash. Jerks. A lot, oh, no, of, take your money. A lot of stores now, like um, those stores at like the airports or convenience stores in general, take Apple Pay. So you could buy like a soda or something like that. And keep your... the change. <laughs> um, then I, I I I woke up this morning. I have uh, the New York Times app on my phone. So like when I wake up, like I'll see like some headlines that I missed while I was asleep. And there was one like when I first woke up, I was kind of groggy and it didn't really register with me. And it was like Thomas Cook files for bankruptcy, you know, stranding thousands of travelers. And I was like, no, I don't know what that is. Oh, well, no big deal. Uh, and then like I'm like slowly starting to wake up and I'm like, Thomas Cook, isn't that that airline and travel agency in yeah. the UK? So then like I, you know, I finished walking my dogs and I've got a TV in my bathroom. I turn the TV and it's like, it's like the story they're covering at that time. And I guess like they went out of business. Today was their last day. They announced they announced last night today would be their last day operating. And they have 150,000 travelers overseas currently Why is that it? have no way to get back. Oh Whenever an airline goes out of business, they never prepare for it. In any way, they're never like, "Hey, we're gonna get people back, but we're not doing any new flight." We like, we need to get everyone home because on this day we're gonna stop flying. They're always just like, "We don't exist anymore." Yeah, it's just like wherever you happen to be, good luck. Buy a new, <laughs> buy a different so airline. So how does that work? Like, can these customers then sue? Or, but they're out of business. Could they then sue the this company? They're gone. I guess it's the risk you take yeah. when you fly on any airline. If they filed for bankruptcy, I don't think you can sue them for that because really? technically they have no assets or. Like you, it's yeah, all protected. That's it's all point. protected. Also, yeah, I, but you're absolutely right. It's like when an airline goes out of business, it's like they threw a big switch. Like yeah. they were just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, sorry, now we, I can't <laughs> see. We, can, we could have no way predicted this. So, it's just offline forever now. Fuck. So there's this uh, quote. I guess there was this interview with uh, a guy named Tim Johnson, who's the head of policy at the UK <clears throat> Civil Aviation Authority, and he said, um, "Where is it? When when people get to the end of their holiday, they will be brought back to the UK." We've chartered 40 planes, and we're going to be running over a thousand flights over the next two weeks. So it's like it's the civil aviation authorities, like, <clears throat> okay, I guess we just gotta get all these people back. That's crazy, and it happened really recently with was it Monarch? Oh yeah, it was Monarch. Yeah, we went. I used to fly them as well. Is that another UK-based airline? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. That was not that long ago either. Yeah, they're gone. Damn. I mean, I mean that's just a testament, like. Uh, that company, I forgot the exact age, but they said that company had been around like something like 170 or 180 years. And it's just a lack of being able to keep up with the way that travel changes, right? Like people don't use travel agents. <laughs> people don't yeah. do that kind of stuff. Like now you've got your phone. You can like search every airline and I mean, the, do the it all town yourself. I grew up in, it's like an old market town. So it's like tons of charity shops and loads of pubs, loads of hairdressers and loads of travel agents. And that's what it was. It was like four of them. And, and now it's like you would never see one. Why would right. you ever walk into a yeah, travel like agent? Like if you told me right now, I had to find, like I couldn't grab my phone. I had to drive to a travel agent. I'd be like, <laughs> I've, I have no idea where, if I had to drive to a travel agent right from yeah, here. As someone who's flown is. probably like 500 times, I would be completely lost going into a travel agent. I'd be like, I'd like to book a flight. Why? Uh, <laughs> do you do, do, that here? I do that But I mean, you've had people book your travel before. Right, but I didn't like... So it's go es somewhere essentially like the same. <clears throat> oh, you mean you just wouldn't know where to go, right? Oh, I thought you meant you wouldn't know what to ask them and I was just <laughs> yeah, like, like I know where I want to go But I just be it'd be like the whole process of walking into a physical building and yeah. try to book a flight would be really weird to It's me. like I'm gonna give this person my credit card yeah. so they can give they can pay someone <laughs> else to give them the ticket to give to me Yeah, my parents still use a travel agent um, but it is like the the woman they use is one of their lifelong best friends. So they just like she Hope she didn't work for Thomas Cook. Michael flew Thomas Cook like a week ago. Really? Yeah. Wow. Got in under the wire. Yeah. Because he was asking me because he was I hope he saved like all the memorabilia like all the in-flight <laughs> stuff. <laughs> he, That's why they're bankrupt. <laughs> he was asking me like what the air because he was on a bunch of airlines that he'd never flown before. He was like, yeah, one of them was Thomas Cook. And I was like, Thomas Cook's still around? That's not going to be a good flight. And nope. then they went out of business a week later. <laughs> Someone, who is this in chat? Pink Floyd 95 says they were around 178 years. That's crazy. Just gone. And they couldn't Tiny adapt to vacations. all of the other successful airline models. Well, I think it's different where it's like they were the travel agent and also the airline. And, you know, they owned like hotel properties. 
I feel like yeah, you'd make a really like, good travel agent, Gus. I think I would. But it would drive me crazy. And 78 years? Were they packaging vacations to, like, the Oklahoma land grabs? <laughs> yeah, that was eight, like, <laughs> I'm just saying, eight years ago, that was 1841. Yeah, they probably oh. got a lot of people here who huh. started businesses and families. Yeah, what vacations were they planning? Uh, you know, to have your gangrenous limbs sawn off, mm, um, mm -hmm. to have <laughs> leeches put on you, you know, a nice leech yeah. package. Alcohol is included. That sounds nice. Um, yeah, our company's old. Yeah. If, well, your country's old. Yeah. I'm trying to see, like, how they got started. But it's like, Tom it's Tom. one of those things where the company looks like it's merged and changed names so many times. I was very confused reading the headline about this today, by the way, because I didn't realize that Thomas Cook was the name of, like, the company. I thought it was, like, the name of a CEO or some person. <laughs> Thomas Cook's Airlines. Well, I mean, it was named after Thomas and, Cook. Yeah, why? Well, I, I gathered. But it was just like, all right, so this guy's gone. Now all these travelers are stranded? What's going on here? <laughs> so the, He had the keys to all the planes. All the planes. <laughs> the, the company was founded, or they started in 1841, and it was founded to carry temperance supporters by railway between the cities of Leicester, Nottingham, Derby, and Birmingham. Derby. Derby. Sure. And then in 1851, they arranged transport to the Great Exhibition of 1851. Oh, um, yeah, you don't know about that? No, they, no that was great. <laughs> organized tours to Europe in 1855 and then to the United States in 1866. Wow. They were on top of this. Back when the United States, 1866, back when the U.S. was just doing its best. <laughs> a real great time for the United States, 1866. The Civil War just ended, right? Uh, yeah, like, eh. yeah, yeah. Some versus pre uh, antebellum uh, America for yeah. perfect time to visit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. I, I, it's I a guess, bit sad, isn't it, really? Yeah, a company that's been around through all of that. Yeah. And like, it's like, it's just gone. Uh, like all the wars that happened since that company started, and they made it through all of that. Yeah, I think what I read was, I, 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 I don't have the article in front of me anymore, but I think what I read was, in the six months, like in the past six months, they had lost like $1.9 billion. So that's why they probably just wow. disappeared. It's like, That'll do it. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Isn't Netflix, like, real in the hole? Like I think all they... the all the of the uh, like S vods except HBO lose money. Yeah, that that I to think. me is just very strange because it's just how is that a sustainable business? You, you just gotta well, have growth. Yeah, like eventually, if Netflix is just Netflix originals and people are subscribing to see all this stuff that they've already spent the money on years ago, eventually they'll make their money back. I mm, true. It's like mm. a ton of investment up front. A lot of venture capitalists. <clears throat> Get that VC money, baby. Hey. It's the same thing with like Uber and Lyft. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's like that that that's that's going to be the shitty thing where eventually Uber and Lyft exist because people hate cabs, right? It's like, oh, I could take an Uber, or I could take a Lyft, and it's cheaper than taking a cab, and it's not as shitty. Every car ride you take on one of those ride-sharing platforms is being subsidized by a venture capitalist. It's like eventually you get to a point where Uber and Lyft could theoretically <clears throat> muscle out the cab business. They're gone. And then it's like, oh, now Uber and Lyft, they have to make money now because there's no competition. So they're going to raise all their prices and your rides aren't subsidized anymore. And now you're yeah. left with a shittier version of the cab company you got rid of. But that's, all, that's the only thing that's valuable in the end is that you just spend all your money and get the giant user base. And then that's the most valuable thing you could possibly have is people who use your service. Yeah. And then you sell it. That's why the, the messaging clients sell for so much. That's, that's there's, there's so nothing, ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. They don't have to like pay for a ton of cars or buildings or shit. It's just like, made an app. Yeah, you, you, make, you, you you'd let people know, hey, I made an app so they can download it. Yeah. All Instagram to... made, the, made the iPhone camera look funny. Yeah. And then sold it for billions of dollars. Just make a really good game in an app and have it have ads on it and then charge for the ad-free version and you're set for life. These companies make so much fucking money off of that. Yep. And like the simplest games too. Like there's this, uh, this game that um, I love playing called Balls, B A L L Z. The it Z is, makes it cool. It does. It's the e it's the most simple game ever, but it's so addictive oh, wait, and so much it's fun. Like, and there's like numbers on the squares. Yeah, numbers on the squares that you basically. It's like um, <clears throat> it's that fucking game with the fucking ball. The fucking game with the fucking ball. Where you have to like break out. That's the one. Oh, it's like yeah. break out, but every block has a certain amount of hits it needs <laughs> to break. It's very fun. Every time someone says break out, I. Imagine you saying it in the Switch ad. Fuck you. No, I'm not just making a reference. 
This episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audible has the world's largest selection of audiobooks and audio entertainment, including Audible Originals. Audible Originals are stories created exclusively for audio, including documentaries, ex- exclusive audiobooks, and scripted shows that you cannot hear anywhere else. Audible keeps you informed, inspired, and entertained. You'll finish more stories when you listen with Audible and always be part of the conversation. With a convenient Audible app, you can listen anytime, anywhere, on any device, mobile, Alexa-enabled, Bluetooth, and more. Audible members get more than ever before. Uh, every month, you can choose one audiobook regardless of price, as well as two Audible originals from a fresh selection. Getting fit or into meditation, stay motivated and inspired with unlimited access to exclusive guided fitness and meditation programs. Uh, I've been reading, or I've been listening to Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson uh, again. I've owned it via Audible for a couple of years now. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, books, and it's absolutely awesome to listen to in audio format. I can listen to it, you know, on my phone. So I get my cards playing. I get put on my ear, my uh, headphones. I'm still listening in the same spot. Awesome, incredible book. Super interesting. I highly recommend it to everybody. Uh, members keep their library of listens forever, even if they cancel. You can start a 30-day trial and choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash RT or text RT to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com or text RT to 500-500. Thanks, Audible, for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've spent entire flights playing that game. And I definitely bought the paid version to not get ads anymore. Yeah, I was playing that around the time we were filming Haunter when we were in England in the Hellfire Caves. And Ryan tried to summon Satan in the middle of the cave. <laughs> uh-huh, and, a- and after that, my phone started glitching out. And it was just like type shit on its own. And I couldn't play balls. I, that was what I was <laughs> most annoyed about. It's like, balls doesn't work. Has that episode come out yet? Yeah. That's really fucking I mean, the crazy. bit where my phone breaks isn't in the episode because it happened like after we wrapped. Yeah, but the fact that that happened in the first place, that's creepy as fuck. But I got video of my phone typing stuff on its own. <gasps> it was, F- at first it was like... don't sleep. I think it was like the, the capacitive field was further out than it usually is, so I would put my hand near it and it would type the <sighs> key. And then after that, it would just type stuff on its own. So I was like, this fo- I need a new oh phone. God, I don't like it. that. Dunk cool. that thing in holy water. <laughs> and then in some, still got it. and then in grains of rice with the Lord's prayer written very small on the <laughs> etched in the rice. <laughs> we had to be blessed with holy water when we did that Annabelle thing. Before going into the room with all those like cursed and haunted objects, there was a priest there who had to bless me and Blaine with holy water. What are you talking about? Did anybody act like it burned? Afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> me. Um, no, we didn't. They're very much like you know this fam. This is this family's life work, and like they take it very seriously. So be <coughs> respectful and all, all that stuff. But um, it was hard not to make a joke about being a Jew and being blessed by a priest with holy water. <laughs> ah, ah, get it off, get it off. You can, um, you can make all, you can make all the jokes now. Yeah, no. <laughs> let them all out. Video's already out. Get that New Testament off of me. Yeah. No, me and Blaine. Would, <laughs> me and Blaine went to see the actual Annabelle doll um, in Connecticut where it is and uh, it's in a room that basically is filled with all these objects that this family has gathered over the couple of years that are apparently like the most haunted or cursed objects in existence. Could you refuse the holy war? I didn't want to. I was like, listen, man, any protection I could get right now would be great. So how was it applied to you? Just like oh, right on so the you couldn't have dodged it. He wasn't like <laughs> flinging it. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> uh. When I, what happens if you spill beer on the friend's couch? Do they get mad? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yeah, I'll, let me go back in time and undo that. <laughs> Just say, uh, hey, sorry, no one told you life was going to be this way. <laughs> <laughs> don't spit beer on, <laughs> on the friend's couch. Um, so I, I, I feel like uh, I, I, I absolutely need to mention that we announced uh, RTX dates last we week. We did, which I'm yeah. I'm super excited about. Um, it's July 3rd to 5th, uh, 2020. Some people were, were were curious, like, oh, that's weird that it's on July 4th weekend. Like, Weren't they all on July 4th? I, well, there have been a couple that haven't been, but it's like the idea has always been for it to be like July 4th weekend. Just like sometimes, because the calendar moves, yeah. it's not always on the weekend. I feel like... It's, actu- it's absolutely the weekend like this time. Like six out of eight have been that weekend. Most have been that weekend. Yeah. Or that week. Sometimes it's like, oh, July 4th Wednesday, so you have it. Yeah. yeah I feel like there's, there's a ton of... VIP parties where we're also watching fireworks at the same time. It so happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy that it's July 4th is actually <coughs> that weekend again. I think it's uh, hopefully easier. People say like, oh, you know, what if people have travel plans? Like, well, that's why we announced the date now. Mm-hmm. 
10 months in advance so you can make those travel plans. Also, your travel plan should be and Austin, should Texas. Be to come to Austin to come hang out with us July 30th. We could have an America Day. We can buy a celebrate, what is it in The Simpsons? Celebrate the freedom, or celebrate America What's by blowing up a small part of it. Yeah. What better way to celebrate the independent country by, than blowing up a small part of it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the Thomas M320 Cook could sponsor RTX this year. What's left of it? I don't think that's possible. They'll fly everyone out, but so not happens, that. What happens to that name? Does someone then buy that name? That's probably part of the bankruptcy, right? Like it's got some kind of value. It'll get auctioned off to the, I think repay we could, their we creditors. Could get it. I don't think we could, dude. They they lost 1.9 billion dollars in six months. They're gonna be asking for more than. <laughs> that we can we, we can we can Apple cash them. We can Apple pay them <laughs> two dollars and fifty cents for uh for it. What are you gonna do with your two dollars and fifty cents? I'm just gonna I'm going buck wild with this money, y'all. You should invest it <laughs> or gamble with it and see how far. Start an airline. <laughs> Just me, two dollars and fifty cents, and a whole lot of moxie. Hey. Just uh, and gumption. I, I read. A, speaking of the start of an airline, I read a fucking crazy story last. Again, on the New York Times. This podcast brought to you by New York Times. Uh, I read a crazy ass story on the New York Times last week. They were talking about the the, the, sto- the crux of the story is about the seven thirty seven Max and the crashes that it's had. Yeah. But it was a really long piece, and as part of it, they talked about lax airline safety in Indonesia, and they talked about the origin of. Uh, the airline that had one of those crashes, Lion Air. And they talked about how the guy who started it when he was younger used to sell typewriters. And then, like, as the airline industry started taking off in Indonesia, what he would do is he would go to the airport and buy, like, it was before digital tickets, like, he would go to the counters and buy physical paper tickets and then go outside of the airport and then try to resell those tickets for the, for more like money than he paid scalp for. airline tickets? Right, he was scalping airline <laughs> tickets. And, uh, like, that's how he started. Then he realized that the airline industry was huge and he could make a lot of money, so he started an airline. Wow. <laughs> With the money he made from other people's airlines. Right. And it's like this crazy story. Like, he went from selling typewriters to scalping airline tickets to starting an airline. It's like the weirdest career path. Trajectory. I, right. You could, like, that is wild shit. But That's I can't, awesome. He found yeah, but a, I can't imagine an... the thought of, like, yeah, I'm going to go buy all these plane tickets and then I'm going to go outside to people at the airport already. And hopefully I can sell these tickets. To <laughs> yeah, like why would these flights too? It wouldn't go to China. It like, was all like in, you know, like intra island, like okay. around Indonesia. Someone shows up at the airport. They're just like, I don't have a ticket yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, Thank imagine you. Getting out of a taxi with your bag or whatever. You're like, all right, time to go in and buy a ticket. <laughs> yeah. It's like I can't be bothered. Well, there's a little boy selling one right here. I can't be bothered to walk inside to pay <laughs> slightly less. Four hundred dollars more. I'll take it. <laughs> <A> little boy. <laughs> I met, when this story started, I really did imagine like a, a young boy, yeah, like lemonade on one side, <laughs> airline <laughs> with the cute backwards like R like on the side, yeah. <laughs> two for one deal. Uh, but yeah, it's, if he, it, it if was he a managed, really interesting story. If I he managed to get people off the street further out who weren't planning on flying that day to fly, that'd be that'd be a pretty sweet. That'd be a baller move. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to you want to go to a different island? You, know, you, wanna, you better run. Boards in twenty minutes. <laughs> I'll give you a really good deal because it's about to take off. I packed a bag for you. <laughs> Come on down. Yeah, that's a strange way to get into that business. Yeah, but I, although I guess if you found someone set something you're so passionate about, would you be affected by the price between tickets? Because surely, as he's buying all the tickets, the f- price of the remaining seats will fluctuate. Going up. Well, the price is probably going up. Yeah. So does it? So he's driving so the price up. Yeah, so if he's like, I'll have 10 tickets, actually I'll have 100, does the price go like... Probably. With the, That's weird. Unless they didn't but, do that back but then. But then that incents him to do that, because he's paying a certain price, but then the tickets have become more valuable because they're more scarce. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Genius. <laughs> and I look like... I can also imagine him breaking into the airport and like slashing the tires of the other flights that he doesn't have. <laughs> he's like, oh, you better get on mine. Mine still works. the only one still going. <laughs> Some real like catch me if you can shit like just incredibly like unscrupulous and like in- ingenious way But going from like typewriters to airline like I want to know more about that little like section of like Well, I made all this money from this airline <coughs> tickets Give give me an air like give me what, a plane. What, what if I remember <laughs> right he um, He leased a plane that was practically falling apart like he leased one plane that was like in terrible repair. It was like, I'm going to start an airline with that one plane that I'm leasing. And it was like that kind of thing where it's like he just had enough money for that. And then like he just kept 
rolling it forward. Like, okay, now I'm making money on this. I'm gonna get another plane. <laughs> it was should, the, I'll send you the article. It's a super and long read, but it's not really cheap. interesting. You should make a video series about all of your favorite articles that you've read <laughs> like that. Where you just present the information in a way that we don't have to read a ton of stuff. Right. I think yeah. it'd do well. I think maybe. I mean, I just like take other people's content and repackage it. Well, because typically, <laughs> it's like buying I mean, an airline ticket and then resetting it. Other people do. <laughs> but, that, but I feel like every time you come up to me and you're like, check this shit out, even if it's off the podcast, I'm always like, that's the one of the most amazing stories ever. <laughs> And yeah. you somehow find them. I, you, you probably just on Reddit. It's because it's I'm always reading shit yeah. to get ready for the podcast. I've and got like a million different stories ready. And that guy's name was Bill Delta. <laughs> 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 One of my favorite jokes, just whatever the company's name is, it being the last name. Bill of, something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or John something. What do you prefer? What's a, what's a good generic first name? Bill is always like my Bill favorite. Bill or John? Yeah. Steve. Steve. I go, I go with Steve a lot. Steve's classic. Just time, a time tested. Too. Well, Dave Podcast started this <laughs> RT podcast ten I, years ago. I used to use this piece of software, like back in my IT days, you know, before we started Rooster Teeth. I used to use this piece of software that allowed you to network Macs and PCs together, and the name of the software was Dave. And I was like, "Why? Why did they call it anything?" I was like, "Nope." Oh, I got to pay my license fee to Dave so I can <laughs> network my PCs and Macs together. Was it an acronym? No. It was just called Dave. I mean, that was at a time where computery shit would just be someone's name, though, wouldn't it? Right, I'm like sure it was Lisa the developer. A, yeah. I'm sure it was like some guy named Dave <laughs> was like, oh, I wrote this piece of software. What am I going to call it? I'll call it Dave. It's perfect. Did you see how much you remember it? It's great. <clears throat> yeah. It's working out good for you. Maybe like a 2001 thing? Yes, I, I'm sorry. I can't do that, Dave. Oh, maybe, uh, let's see. Dave Mac Networking. I used it back around 2001. What am I looking at? I'm curious. We talked about the guy who was hired uh, at Microsoft, right? His name is Mac Book. Oh, he was in the commercial. Yeah. Wait, Mac that was his Mac real name? Mackenzie yeah. Book. Mac no, Book. I just thought that was like a dumb ad catcher. I mean, it, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could be very well be engineered, but... That's a great idea. I mean, Genius. yeah. Ch Chef Kiss. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they don't, they don't make Dave anymore. Go figure. You don't say. <laughs> really? I find that hard to believe. Also, going back to the generic, like a generic first name, uh, you know, to name a, a company, it depend also depends on like how old I want that company to be. Because if it's like mm -hmm. an old, it's like usually like Reginald Q. Mm. Yeah, Reginald Q, <laughs> Reginald Q Delta, who started the first airplane. He was there at Kitty Hawk. The Q doing really, sketches. Yeah. really adds the cherry to that. It, I, I don't know why. <laughs> Reginald Q Thomas Cook. <laughs> Thomas Cook. <laughs> Reginald <laughs> Q Thomas Cook. That's like too many names. I feel like now in tw 2019, it would be Chad. Yeah. Or like Chadworth Q <laughs> Cook. You mean like so like a hundred years from now when they look back like to this yeah, time, they're, like, they're oh, gonna be Chad like, Delta. Ah uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Chad I, I'm so happy I know a Chad. Yeah. Because before Chad, before I knew Chad, Chad was just a comedy name for me. It's just like it's imagine, so imagine knowing <laughs> someone called Chad. <laughs> is Chad, and I love Chad. Is Chad short for something? Not this one at least. Chadwick? 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 Maybe. I, I call I him mean, Chadius. <laughs> Which I know is incorrect, but still humorous. Chad Rack Meshack. What Benigan? is Chad short <laughs> for? Uh, Chad is the modernized form of the old English given name. I have no idea how to say that. Siata, influenced by the Welsh word cad, meaning battle. Oh. It is also a short form of Charles and Chadwick. Barbara means the bearded one. Charles has a ton of names that you can use, like, I guess, Chad and Chuck. You are Charlie. doing this a lot. That's what it means, because barbe is a uh, beard in French. What does Gavin mean? What's the meaning of your name? What does um, Gavin mean? I think mean? it's Scottish for nose. <laughs> That's not right. No, I made it up. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> of uncertain etymology, some believe Gavin to be from <clears throat> Gwalkmai. I have no idea. It's a Gaelic name derived from the elements Gwalk, meaning a hawk, and maid, meaning a blow or battle. Hawk so blow. I'm a blowhawk? You're a blowhawk. <laughs> nice. Most people would have gone with battle hawk, but blowhawk. <laughs> yeah. Blowhawk. <laughs> Which is actually another name for nose. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta blow my hawk. It's running like crazy. It's more, it's more like you go into the bathroom, like, got any blowhawk? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> that guy lingering around the bathroom, real blowhawk. Real <laughs> blowhawk, <laughs> yeah. Shove it up your blowhawk. Right, I'm changing my name on Steam to blowhawk as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, man. I, um, I read this story the other day about, you know, there's always these stories about, like, these ridiculously expensive cars. Um... Like and like the amount of maintenance and upkeep that it takes to, to own one of these cars. So it's like a real Which car are you talking about? Right now I'm gonna talk about the Bugatti Veyron. Okay. Which is like I think like a 1.5 to 3 million dollar car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a thousand horsepower. Something like that. And it's like you have to change like you have to change the tires constantly because it, they go so fast the tire the tires yeah. disintegrate. As as a car, almost completely useless. Right. But as a piece of your well, I, I looked up well, I read how much it costs to have an oil change for one of those cars. Oh god. I bet just getting to the oil costs money. <laughs> it's it, it first of all, it takes 27 hours of labor to change the oil in one of these cars. <gasps> and it costs $21,000 to have Who an oil change that? in your car. Can you imagine rolling into a fucking Jiffy Lube? <laughs> <laughs> like one of those driving yeah, places. They're still like, uh, yeah, it's, uh, your air filter is really dirty. We should probably replace that. So uh, like, I got a coupon for fifty percent off oil change. <laughs> Can I get the early bird special? They go bankrupt. <laughs> still eleven grand to get the early. Yeah, yeah, pull it in, pull it in the bay. Like, Come on. where do you go to get that done? You I can't get you to, can go to the mechanic. The, probably the dealership. Probably, probably the, dealership, the place yeah. that sells that sells it to you. How many Bugatti deal dealerships do you know? Is Me? there one? None. Here? Is there one in Austin? <laughs> I don't think so. Not a big enough market. Gotti dealership. And they have the, the other United one now, States. the Chiron. 21,000. That's a brand new car that you could buy with uh, like, that money. A, a, a brand new, like, Honda Civic. Honda Civic. You could buy a Honda Civic <laughs> yeah, and some extra parts with that. To change your <laughs> <laughs> you can, can you drive up with a Honda Civic and be like, there you go, I'm going to pay <laughs> I'll trade, trade you. Yeah. I'll trade you this new car for an oil change. Should I tell you what happened to me recently? Um, when I went to get my car inspected, a you're, very annoying situation. You, you're a uh, Veyron? What? When you went and got your uh, Bugatti inspected? Yeah, my car inspected. Okay. What do you think I said? No, I was making a joke that you have a Bugatti yeah. Veyron. Oh, my, yes, exactly. I was going to say that um, <clears throat> I recently had to get my battery replaced in my car because it's a little bit older and went nearby to get a new battery, had it replaced, and then I was like, oh, I, I need to get my car inspection done since my registration is expiring, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Uh, I go to the inspection place and they're like, oh, it's going to be about an hour wait. We have a couple people ahead of you. I like, That's fine. So I'm sitting in the waiting room. They finally get to my car and it turns out to be like an hour and a half before it's over. Mm -hmm. And then the guy comes in. He goes, uh, did you recently get some uh, work done to your car? And I was like, yeah, I had the battery replaced. And he goes, Okay, because it, it failed one of these tests on your inspections. Oh. Um, and part of the reason is if it's a brand new battery, it hasn't had time to... It's to reset the sensor. Yeah. You have to drive like 100 miles. Yeah, and so he, he's like, yeah, just, you know, drive around 100 miles or so and then come back. We'll give you a free inspection. And I'm just like, cool. So I just wasted my entire afternoon. It's also so weird to me that, like, I have a brand new battery that those guys could have replaced themselves and it would have failed that test. I just, like... Was very so frustrated. You didn't just wait until you had a hundred miles. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. I thought it was like, oh, I have a no, brand I mean, new battery. Like, you didn't then go out and just drive around aimlessly, did you? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> just angrily driving for a hundred <laughs> miles. <laughs> Go, goes to San Antonio, comes back here. <laughs> Take Test it. it now. That's what yeah. I was about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so shitty. Yeah, I just didn't. I didn't realize it was a thing. Mm -hmm. I think there's a Ferrari that's like forty million dollars or something. What? Get out. Or like thirty. There's there's some there's one car that's just obnoxiously expensive. Mo like oh, like a three million dollar car's not obnoxiously expensive. Well, yeah, but there's tons of them. Like a Rolls Royce, you could easily spend that. Most expensive car. You get the cup holders, <laughs> that knocks it up into the three million. The, imagine like what are the like upgrades from like a like a one million dollar version to like the LX three million dollar yeah. version? Like what are they adding? What are the bells and whistles they're adding onto that to push it over the top? Let me check CE Wor CEO World Magazine to see what the most expensive cars in the world are. <laughs> People are bored. So, oh. Is the most expensive car that's like four hundred thousand dollars? What? There's like a car that's like four or five hundred thousand dollars. Is that For sure? Yeah. Well, the, I mean, a Bugatti is more than that. Is it really? Yeah, three million. Yeah. The Bugatti, a Rolls Royce, you could probably no get for like eight this. million. Lavoie Noir, nineteen million dollars. You can get <gasps> a Rolls Royce Sweep Tails for thirteen million dollars, and then it goes down from there. Oh my god! Well, we saw a pretty expensive car once, didn't we? We did. It was a uh, was that where was that was that in Baltimore? I think so. Yeah, we saw a Maybach. 
in uh, in Baltimore all those oh years ago. God. How much money do you have to have where buying one of those cars is like not a big deal? I assume you have too much. Well, and uh, yeah, you need to spend it's to, it. To... It's also to the point where you buy that car and then you probably don't drive it. True. Oh yeah, no chance. Yeah, it's you like, need like you just... a, f- a huge write-off. It's in your like twenty-car garage <laughs> you have in your Tony Stark mansion down there. At that, if if you have enough money to buy like that kind of car, casual, because no, that's the thing is like to, if you're buying that car, you have significantly many 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 times that money because right. no one's like I got to work really hard I'm saving up for a 13 million dollar <laughs> yeah. car it's like no no, no, no. I have, I have 14 to million dollars thousand dollar oil change <laughs> exactly so you already have more money than you know what to do with so at that point I feel like you're just like doing demolition derby on some like oh. you're just crashing like you that that's just an obscene amount of wealth that leads to like distraction I guess I, I just like. never understood the concept of like owning something but not wanting to be able to use it to its full extent like having one of the like a nineteen or thirteen million dollar car and like not wanting also, to drive it. Also, what makes it that much better? Right. Also that. Right. It's like how, so. What's like we said twenty one thousand dollars. One two three. Why right, twenty one one two? You could buy nine hundred and four Honda Civics for no. <laughs> nineteen million dollars. I don't. Billionaires just they think differently. I assume. Yeah. Because a, a, a few tens of millions isn't anything to them. It's nothing. It's like buying an expensive meal to a, to a I just don't know how the, anybody spends that much money. The, there's a great uh, comedian Gary Goldman who's fantastic. He has a he Gary has a Goldman. long bit about like the difference between Bill Gates and his billions and like us and he has this like bit talking about like he found a $20 bill in an old coat and how like that much how much it meant to him. And he's like Bill Gates would have to find a $13 million bill <laughs> In an old coat to have the same feeling that I did <laughs> finding find a twenty, a Rolls Royce that just happened to be in his name, just sat in an alley. He's yeah, like, oh, to the same effect. This. Wasn't there like some reference if like if Bill Gates was walking and dropped a one hundred dollar bill, he would like it doesn't make sense for him to turn around and go pick it up because yeah, he's I mean, already made more and that money. That was back when he was the wealthiest person. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. He's given away a lot of that money, so he's not who's wealthiest now. Jeff Bezos, probably. I think J.K. Rowling was one of the first people to lose bin- billionaire status due to charitable donations. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. Which is cool. I mean, if you're going to lose it, that's a great way to. <laughs> mm-hmm. There was a legacy, man. Not by being Thomas Cook. <laughs> <laughs> not to have your, like, uh, airline. What would the there world was, be like there... if, if it banned billionaires? Interesting question. So I, uh, that, that, that leads me actually to this analogy I read a few months ago, uh, maybe a month or two ago. Uh, I forget. It was... It might have been like a Bernie Sanders analogy that that they made that he made, uh, but it said like if you thought of, like to try to put into perspective how rich a billionaire is. So if you imagine a staircase, and to to step up, every step on the staircase represents one hundred thousand dollars of net worth. So it's like if you get up under the first step, you have a hundred thousand dollars of net worth. Half of the people in the United States are on the base of the very first step. Um, those households in the 80th percentile, richer than four out of five Americans, are on the fifth step. A billionaire is 10,000 steps up the staircase. <laughs> oh my God. And I am locked out of the house in the front yard. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not anywhere near that. The steps. It's like, it's, it's like such a crazy scale wow. to think about, if you think about it that way. God, that's Yeah, and most jarring. people... Or, like, on a, or on a step that they could jump down onto the floor and be perfectly fine. Right, the billionaire's built a fucking elevator, so he doesn't have to walk 10,000 steps up to Holy get there anymore. Shit. Steps for, either for the hoi polloi, for those plebs <laughs> taking the lift. Why, why isn't it being a billionaire more frowned upon? It's, it's definitely making that turn, I think. Yeah. I think uh, you're starting to find, people are starting to find, realize, maybe that's not <laughs> such a good thing after all. Maybe that's, a fa- that's an exposure of a failure in the system. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it like something about Jeff Bezos? If he like sold off all his assets, he could be close to being the world's first trillionaire. <clears throat> or is that just like way? Uh, I don't know about. That. I mean, he was registering on the like point one of a trillionaire at yeah. some points. Something I, something I don't understand is like cool feet. Uh, honestly, I don't know why bill like billionaires aren't racing to solve climate change issues and like some of them new- are. Some of them are, but like in like a really like Jeff Bezos, for example, like in a hugely spectacular way, like people will sing songs about you mm-hmm. 200 years from but now. I, I think what they're doing is thinking way beyond 
this planet. They're like, okay, well, this this one's done. Uh, we'll do space stuff. We'll move humanity to a different planet, and they're all planning for that. Like, so many billionaires are doing space programs. Why not? Yeah, solve but why not we... do something that is more of a a tangible benefit? Yeah. Shrug. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Shrug. <laughs> so I looked up the uh, <clears throat> the wealthiest historic historic figures, like wealthiest people of all time. Adjusted. This list is adjusted for. 2010 US dollars. So was there a trillionaire? No. Oh. The highest one on this list is Jacob Fuger, who's 400 billion dollars. He what was a, he a German merchant, mining entrepreneur, and banker. He lived between 1459 and 1525. Wow. He could have bought the planet. Wait, yeah. That's an equivalent wealth. The equivalent would be 400 billion dollars in 2010 dollars. How much was Louisiana? <laughs> Not nearly that. <laughs> Cheaper Number two that. on the list is John D. Rockefeller. It was three hundred thirty-six billion dollars. <throat> he was the first person ever to reach a nominal personal fortune of one billion U.S. dollars, and that was in the early nineteen hundreds. And that That's was three hundred thirty-five <laughs> billion dollars before. Right. Oh my God! You would have no comprehension about any of the way the world works in terms of like normal people. How could it, you relate to anyone? It would completely and uh, like it would be on a. I feel like a lonely existence because it would completely like. And you morally become quest like if it was like oh you know this this will this money here will cause all of this badness you'd just be like buy I don't know fix it with money somehow you know like, like not yeah. worrying about any of how people are feeling yeah, just trying be, to throw money at everything you'd just be like Doctor Manhattan but with money <laughs> like you'd get this just like make people explode into hundreds <laughs> good time to uh, to um, plug our short Bezos in space. That we did, which is about this exact thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, business in space, just like Amazon, like the, 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 the you know, tech moguls uh, increasing interest in outer space mm -hmm. and it being, being like painfully clear that they really intend to get <laughs> off this planet before uh, the shit really hits the fan. Them and all the rear rear mirror. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just like, yeah, watching Earth like in flames in the, in the spaceship's rearview mirror as they escape. I don't think I'd ever want to go live in space. No one can hear you scream. Right? It's great. You, you don't have to worry about loud neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you guys will experience space travel in your in your no, lifetime? No, no, I don't think so. No. You know, ab no. But I really, <laughs> I really wish. I, 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 I think. Yeah. They're building Chris like might. SpaceX is building like that Starhopper stuff here in Texas, down in uh, Boca Chica. I don't know if you've seen any of those, like that test footage. What? Uh, yeah, they're building like a big rocket that they, they want to try to ultimately use to get to mars and they're like they're building it in a weird way I, have y'all not heard these stories like this this mm -mm. star hopper they're trying to build it cheaper than normal and they're using like <laughs> this can't miss <laughs> yeah they're can't using like welders who normally build water towers to like build the hull and like put it all together and it had like its first like test flight two weeks ago maybe three weeks ago where it actually got up like went over to another pad and landed and now they're like putting uh, adjustable fins on it and it's it's becoming a real thing. Shit. And this this thing is going to uh, uh, loose the surly bonds of Earth and uh, fly into outer space and get to Mars. Yes. Okay. But uh, so far, it is hopped. It is hopped. About 30 feet from pad to pad. Uh, 200 feet, maybe. I think it's like 250 <laughs> okay. yards. But yeah, it has not gone far. What's the, na what's the national student debt? Oh. Mm, U.S. national. Are you thinking Bezos could pay it off? Yeah. With, without even thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Without even thinking it about it. It might be nope. a lot of debt. I think it's a ton. <laughs> nope. Maybe a little too much. Uh, $1.5 trillion. Oh, well, no, he can make mind. a nice debt. He can make a little, yeah, a little dimple. Damn. Federal student loan debt. Yep. Oh. God, that's sad. It's a lot of money. Fuck. Oh, let's for get, what? Let's, degrees? Let's get Rockefeller on that. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay, let's get Rockefeller and Fuger. That was the guy's name, right? Jacob yeah. Fuger. Let's get them on that together. They could take care of a little over half. All right. Well, I'm well, depressed. It's about time to wrap this up on that depressing note. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We'll do, we'll do more post-show. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Happy fall. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching uh, this episode of the podcast. Do you know what the meaning of your name is? Why don't you uh, leave it in a comment down below? We'll see uh, what, the, what the best meanings are. See if you can beat Blowhawk. Blowhawk, right the bearded one. What's Andrew? It just it means guy. Huh? Man. <laughs> Stinks. Let us know what our names are. Rue as well. All right, leave a comment.